Cheers and welcome to the first episode of Wrestling on the Rocks. Every week we have a new first episode. This week is still the same. Episode one every week. I am Marsh Clump. Who are you? I am Clump for some fucking reason. He just keeps being Clump. I'm going to say it again because we lost it in translation, but the world without a clump would just be flat terrain. Back. I think it's a good line, and I'm going to keep it in every time we do That's an episode good. one tonight. However many episode ones we do tonight, that line will be in there. Yeah. Every Let's clump see. is a mountain, especially clumps in the toilet, clumps in mashed potatoes, clumps in clumps. Yeah. yeah. Yuma is nothing but loose clump. God damn it. Yeah. That's how we do it. That's how we do here. Uh, Clump, what are you drinking? I have Starbucks. Ooh. Not Basic a fan. Basic bitch coffee. Nope. <laughs> Wait, Pumpkin's back at Dunkin'. Is it back at Starbucks? I don't. I, I hate peas. I hate pumpkin spice on either. <laughs> what about pumpkin pie? Um, I'm not a fan of pumpkin pie. All right, that's the end of the show. Texture. Yeah. I'm going to have to call it's somebody, the... figure out what we're doing next week. Yeah, it's, it's the most <laughs> inferior form of pie. If we're going to talk about an autumn pie, uh, pecan, pecan. Pecan pie is the best pecan pie, period. I don't like that much nut on anything. I'm going to be honest with you. I'll yeah, fucking you nut guys on are... you. Calm down. Okay. You guys are polar opposites. <laughs> we are. Yeah, because I tell her all the time that the one pie I don't want is pecan. Really? Yeah. Is it just because it's like pure sugar? You know, I think it's because I don't like pecans. They're kind of waxy to me. So I think that I've actually had one where it was super minced up, and I enjoyed it. I thought it wasn't bad, but when the pecans are like full on pecans on top, there's yeah. there's just too much for me. I can get that. All like right. to, to me, ahead. it's um, it's just like it's a warm taste. But like, yeah, pumpkin pie to me, it's the same thing. Texture, the texture of it is like, it's, it makes me think of like mayonnaise that turned because it's yeah it, it's got all right skin. yeah all right we got grim reaper in the chat grim reaper good to see ya he says what's going on glad you guys didn't get new theme music this week that is right when we go to the main roster when we finally hit episode two we're gonna have the same fucking music i'm gonna have the same shirt clump's gonna continue to not wear pants and pretend he's wearing pants i like to be like donald duck yes at all times my problem with being Donald Duck is it ends in a Jackson Pollock every time I sneeze. <laughs> oh, come on. All right, all right, all right. God. Okay, maybe I crossed the line. All right, I apologize. Yeah, We're here to talk about uh, wrestling, and we can do that. Let's see. I was going to bring it up because we were talking about right before. They, they've got images now of John Cena as the Peacemaker in Suicide Squad. What do you think of that look? It makes sense for the character being a douchey Captain America, which we were talking about. Um, he, God, does he look like a turd. Um, I, but I like it. We also uh, learned this week that Samoa Joe will be Shark. It which, says Steve a G. If I find out that's not Samoa Joe, I'm going to be pissed. Wait, what? I'm looking at it. It says Steve a G to me. Yeah, it's a different dude, man. What? Upcoming movie, Suicide Squad, King Shark. So you got to find out where the Samoa Joe shark business comes from. Because if I don't get Samoa Joe in this new movie, I'm not watching. That's right. You clumped up. Although I'll watch anyways. I like John Cena. Let's see. Uh, speaking of John Cena, The Rock finally signed the last paperwork to officially own the XFL along with his ex-wife and partner in crime. Although this is not a crime. Uh, Danny Garcia. And it looks like uh, an article came out in Sports Illustrated talking about their, their purchase of XFL. And it looks like it was mostly her idea that she was really excited about the XFL when it came out, really liked it, was hoping they'd been part of the conversation early on. And then once it went up for sale, I guess she called The Rock and was all like, hey, how about we uh, buy that thing? Because they both love football so much and they, they fucking did it. So the two of them bought it for slightly more than $7, which is good because that's around his budget. From what I understand. I have an answer. So, Samoa Joe will voice King Shark in upcoming animated and or DC video game properties. Oh, he's going to be the voice for cartoon sharks. Okay, I'm all right with that. 
I am I, all right with that. I like Steve Agee, but yeah, no, I kind of want like Samoa Joe and everything. Yes, Samoa Joe would have been sick. Let's see. So a couple other things in the news. Jamoa's what was sick. I looking at? Man, I just had it. I'm losing it. Uh, NXT UK is coming back. September 17th, they're coming back, which I think can only be good, right? Get yeah. those people back doing stuff. And then the other news news was, oh, Wade Barrett is going to be joining NXT announced team this week. It's been reported as a one shot for right now, but uh, who knows? He does well enough. It could uh, could end up in something now. Clump, are you there? What are you Googling? Yeah. I hear a lot of typing, and I asked you a question oh, directly. Okay. I think it's cool that Wade Barrett's going in. I was looking up more things about King Shark. <laughs> God, we, we're uh, past King Shark. Yeah, we moved on. Yeah, I, have, I have things. But no, I'm, I I want more Wade Barrett. I I don't know if I like him on a commentary desk, though. He did good we, with NWA when he was over there. His voice is so low, I could never fucking hear it. Okay. Like, it blended into everything, which, yeah, that's more of a disability thing on my end. We'll call it that. But, like, I I, I kind of couldn't hear it. I think he could do a lot with WWE or with any promotion in a lot of different capacities. He could be, you know, an authority figure, a manager. I'm just happy to see him in wrestling in some capacity at all. So, I think yeah. that him not being very audible on NWA was an NWA problem. They did that with everybody. They, they mic'd underneath the ring, and it was evident because of how loud – everything yeah. that happened in the ring was and how washed out everyone who was talking around it would be. I think that was their audio mixing issue. I don't think that was on him, to be honest. Yeah. That's fair. I mean, uh, yeah, it, it... I'm thinking about NWA. Yeah, the, the ring was just bananas. Yeah. It was loud. Uh, what do you got over there, producer? Uh, does Clump know about NJPW's new remote cheer system? I don't know anything about it. And JPW's got a new remote cheer system. Are you familiar with that, Clump? Nope. Yeah, I oh. what that is. Yeah, it's a... I don't really know what it's going to look like. Some people were saying, oh, is it the NJPW Thunderdome? I am not really getting a lot of details in that aspect. It just says... Um, let me see. They're looking for new ways to encourage their fans to express themselves and... They're going to adopt Yamaha's remote cheer powered by Sound UD system for uh, the event on the 26th, the 27th, and 29th. Yeah. Hmm. I mean, so, to me, I, I think it could be very similar to um, what we're having happen now with Thunderdome, where we have, you know, no one in the crowd. Though they have been doing some crowds in their more recent shows. So maybe what it could be is having the small crowds and doing an amplification system. Christ. <laughs> yeah, this is very so exciting. Okay. This news that Clump just immediately starts yawning. All right. Yeah, well, no, Grim that's... Reaper thinks that bad news Barrett should come out to his podium like old and do his whole commentary from that. I'd love it if he did it like right there on the ramp too. Just all the commentator from the <laughs> from the podium up on the ramp. What if we find out that Barrett is uh the like the leader of whatever the hell this is thing the Restribution. I, I don't know. Yeah, I was going to say Ascension, then I wanted to say Absolution. I'm like, no, it's another dumb fucking lot of syllables word. How many syllables is too much for you, Clump? <laughs> Two. Two. Yeah, I guess that's. I guess I could see that. Hey, real quick, because we didn't watch AEW, so I'm going to get a couple AEW things out of the way, like news-wise, and then we'll kind of move into the shows. Uh, yeah. But we wanted to give a couple cheers real quick to a couple birthdays. We had a cheers birthday for Bronson Reed of NXT. We were rooting for him. We really wanted him to take home that North American title. I think it's still within his grasp. Cheers and happy birthday to Bronson Reed, as well as a cheers and happy birthday to Kylie Ray. Smiley Kylie is also uh, having a birthday this week. Cheers. Uh, can we do a quick also uh, tears in our beers thing before we jump into Go news? Ahead. Uh, Brian Zane of Wrestling with Regret, uh, which big YouTube channel for wrestling, good content. Yeah. Uh, one of the guys got me way into this, and who I try and model 
myself after when we do this. Um, yeah, you've talked about him a bunch. Are you kidding yeah. me? I'm saying um, I've, I've, yeah. His, uh, so his uh, mother passed away on Friday, and oh, he's taking a pause God. from, yeah, from content, and you know he was pretty open about that and was in his re in his videos because he did do some videos this weekend, and yeah, the uh, best of luck to you and condolences and hope to see you back. We hate you so much right now. I can't Clark. believe you did it that we way. I, so tears in our beers for Brian Zane's mom. I'm not. Good not emotions. actually, yeah. Not actually, the, Brian Zane. The yeah, way you set it up, the way you were jerk. setting it up. I thought Brian Zane died, and I was like, "Holy shit! How did I not hear about this?" And I started oh. pulling it up, and you're kind of like, "Oh, this guy, he's so special. He, he does this. He's meant this, this to me. He's such an influence." And I was like, "Oh my god, this dude!" And then you're all like, "And his mom is, you know, some happened." Yeah, and I was like, all like, like "It's equal. It's like also it. sad, but like yeah. your setup, dude." Well, I didn't want to be like, hey, you know, this guy, like, I didn't want to say, like, this person's mom. I want to be like, yeah, this is why we're talking about him. Like, yeah, I get, I get what you're saying. But, I mean, yeah, like, if you're, uh, I'm bad. We, we know. It I was can. a hell of a setup, man. And it really, it, it, my God. Well, when you die, let me set that up for you, okay? Yeah, I'll have you set it up in a different way. Yeah. Actually, if, like, if, like, I lose a pet. I'm going to have you set it up where you talk about me that way. And then you go and then we go don't have you on. Yeah. And then I'll just come <laughs> running in just being like, oh, it's the pet. Yeah, that'd be crazy. What the hell are you doing here? <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's see. I don't – I didn't have a bunch for news this week outside of that in and of itself. Was there anything news-wise that you that came across where you thought, hey, we got to talk about that? Not a whole heck of a lot. You know, like it – we had a lot of just good in the ring action. We didn't have a lot of drama outside the ring. Um, oh, Renee Young. Yeah, she I left. Was say is, I thought you wanted to maybe talk about that during <laughs> talking about like SummerSlam, but yeah, uh, Renee Young has uh, had her last days with WWE. Yeah, yeah, she finished up. Do you? I know that there's a lot of talk about what she can or can't do, and I think that the consensus from everybody who's ever worked with her is that there's nothing she can't do. Um, yeah. A lot of AEW fans are screaming that they're going to get Renee Young, and I think that that's where she's going. And it's understandable to see that connection, obviously, because she's married to the world champ. So if she wanted over there, I don't think that, that would be that big of a deal, and I don't think that anyone would be smart to say no about having Renee Young on their team. Do you honestly believe there's a, there's much of a chance she goes to AEW? Because I'll be honest with you, I don't. I think that the visibility she had on WWE backstage, the amount that she was being utilized in WWE at different times, including commentary and the interviews and the talking smack, um, I don't see how she would go to an AEW and it not look like a step down. And that's not to intentionally knock AEW, but... Not a lot of people know about AEW if you don't already really like wrestling, and they don't use very many interview people to begin with. They use Tony Schiavone. They pull him right off the desk half the time. They've got Alex Marvin. I'll tell you this. They don't have anyone good back there. They got Dasha. She's all right. They used Dustin Rhodes' uh, daughter once, and she didn't do bad or anything, but we don't see these people consistently. I mean, does she really go to a company and get a 30-second spot once every couple weeks? You know what I mean? I think if she goes over, I think they have a lot of reason to bring her over in a backstage, like in a assistive capacity, as well as fuck whatever she wants to do. I would have her do it if it's her becoming their lead commentator. I think that'd be awesome. I think she could have a great dynamic with Tony and uh, J uh, Jr. Um, and just get rid of, you know, Excalibur or have her yep. in task. I think it would be okay. I don't want to see her in any less than that capacity. Then again, I also want her to be happy in whatever she does. She could do whatever she wants. It might also be something really cool if she went to work for TNT. And yeah, I could there. see that. You the know, sports or, stuff that they do over there. Yeah. I could definitely she, see her being a part of something like that. 
you know, she could also potentially go to another broadcaster. She could go back to CBC, which is where she came from to WWE. You know, there's... But wasn't that in Canada? Yeah, what's wrong with that? Because she lives in Las Vegas with her husband who works in Florida. I think that would be a hell of a drive. Just long term. Baptine in chat says replace Ellen. And Grim Reaper says, I yeah, can see Renee uh, hosting her own show on cable, perhaps an internet platform. 100%. I think that she's so good. I don't see how she just it doesn't. She's not like, you know, shaking off all of the offers with a stick, just trying to figure out what to do, you know? I think it's but weird that they lost her. It would not surprise me to see her pop up in TNT on some sort of sports thing. Yeah. Um, I do find it, like, kind of weird that they lost her but then you know i i think her role's been a bit different set or a bit underutilized since yes uh john moxley left and i could see that causing tension and i i'm not saying you know oh, they they didn't they didn't like it but i could see there being like a there is definitely a difference you know we didn't see her working on raw after he left you know yeah, I don't think they liked her on commentary either way, to be honest. Although she did commentary in NXT too. I've always liked her on commentary, but yeah, she got a lot of flack. Yeah. Um she wasn't utilized a lot after that and went straight into WWE backstage and then once that got cancelled. I don't know. I could see her being upset with, with how they're utilizing her. Mm-hmm. Um, I did appreciate like and I liked the amount of positivity that you saw in her leaving. Yeah. Like that, that made me happy because that didn't, you know, that's how it should be. You shouldn't have somebody quietly leave, you know, mm-hmm. I, I, and that's, you know, the right route. I think every promotion could take something from that. And I feel like with what's happened with the other big company, we haven't seen that because not just for releases, but when people have left and a few people have left AEW, we don't hear about it. Do the announcement. Wish him well. Do a thing because it means a lot. And, you know, uh, yeah, this may not be something to consider at that high of a level, but I always think of, like, the idea of you can you can definitely prevent somebody from ever coming back to work with you Yeah. based on how you do it, you know? Mm-hmm. Dorkchop says, I could see Renee pop up on Good Morning America or something. I doubt she stays in wrestling, to be honest. She's just money as a TV personality. She can do just about anything. Everyone loves her, and she's a pro. And that's kind of what I think, too. Uh, also, what up, Dorkchop? Thank you for coming through. Oh, yeah, see? Look, Art. Oh, you posted that picture. I was like, that's a weird graphic. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but, yeah, our animation didn't didn't come through. I got to fix our animations. It did. I, it said well, actually, it said Dorkchop right over Renee's face, and I was like, damn it! It did, but it didn't <laughs> have, like, one of us dancing or doing the... Uh, cartoons that i made i went through all that hassle i gotta make those work again i think it's my fault i think i know what i did i just gotta fix it um with that in mind 100 percent. i think she can go do anything i don't think she stays in wrestling because i no disrespect to aew but wwe is the top of the mountain and if you leave wwe and you go to aew there's a larger opportunity you have of being lost in even a bigger shuffle right and i think that she leaves to do something on a larger platform because I think there are larger platforms than WWE. I don't think it's the end-all, be-all of all television by any means. But I do think that if you say, I've you know, I've been doing this for WWE for this many years, I think you just go to fucking ABC after that or something, you know? like I Producer here, I was actually thinking, I could see her doing something with Maria Menounos or doing, like, her own thing. Like, I completely thought that was like my first thought. Like, oh, she's going to do something much bigger, much cooler. She's going to be no nationwide by everyone yeah everyone's gonna know you know Maria, not know from Maria Menounos. not from wrestling but yeah. just from being amazing Maybe at her job we'll look role. back and we'll say she's one of us <laughs> yeah. yeah like what was it we were in a movie theater and they had the little previews before movies like before the previews where it's all like hey check out this thing and don't forget popcorn and Maria Menounos came up and uh I I leaned over to the producer and I was like she's one of ours <laughs> 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 she, uh, let's see she could easily be in Keller Ripa's type role and I think that's true too I'm super excited to see what she does she's got that new cookbook coming out they're doing a ton of photo shoots with it she could end up on the cooking network doing something you know uh, some sort of like wrestling with the chef uh-huh. 
No, she's not yeah. going to do right. No. Why yeah. Why did you do that? Backyard cooking. No. Ah, wrestling. No. Right. That's oh. not. What? It's, what? She's much better than that. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to all. the cooking dome. Boo. Who wants to be a full contact millionaire? Yeah, full contact millionaire. That's not pyro. My kitchen's on fire. What? Boo, woo, woo. That'd be cool, like, if you if you get a question wrong, cool. Now you got to enter some kind of fight. Yeah, exactly. Oh, that's not the next ingredient. You've got a six-man gauntlet match to get through now. <laughs> that what? would be so, that'd Sorry, be dude. Hilarious. Special guest judge Teddy Long. Hey, player, you're going to be in a tag team match with The Undertaker. Yeah, yeah. You hear, like, <laughs> eh, and then Teddy Long, you just hear, player, player, player. And he comes coming out. Oh, did you get that wrong, player? And just... Uh, Dorkshop says, let her be the new Anthony Bourdain. Send her around the world to eat food and discover culture. You know, minus the Rona. I believe 31 flavors of Rona could be its own show. 31 countries, 30 types of the virus. No, why are you doing this? Okay, fine. 19? Oh, (laughs) that's fucked up, dude. I made a joke and you got dark. (laughs) <laughs> that wasn't the worst joke I made in that. You didn't hear the other one, which we can skip over. We'll skip it. That's true. Do you think, and we'll get off of this because I'm super proud of her for leaving for whatever she wants to do. Do you think the fact that she caught Corona and it stopped Moxley from being able to show up on his show as the champion for several weeks factored into this decision at all? Because I wouldn't be surprised if they discussed it and it was like, hey, I make this much. You make that much. I miss this much work because of what happened at your work. I would think as adults they would make that they would make a decision together, and I think it would come up. I'm not saying like she's leaving because she. And I'm not saying any of that, but I'm saying, do you think that came up in conversation? I think so. I mean, I, I couldn't see it not because it makes sense to you know you. These conversations, I mean, we have them at our level. I'm sure at upper, you know, at different levels of income and in industries, you know, as you're in a relationship, so like, shit, this sucks. How bad are you doing? Oh, damn. You know, like, I guess that's a really good point. If if all of us have sat down and chatted about how we're gonna not expose each other to Corona and how our jobs impact that, I guess it would be ridiculous to think that people who actually make money doing it wouldn't talk about it. We spend money to do this, and we're all like, we got to keep spending the money, man. How do we keep making sure the money goes out? I'm sure they're having a different style conversation with them. Yeah, we're much dumber. Yeah, we <laughs> we we're so dumb. But, I mean, it's only our first episode. You know, cut us some slack. Episode one. Although, this is actually a, a huge bummer for our selfish reasons of not having her on with the Sam Roberts hosting that I know. Show. I wanted yeah. her to host Talking Smack with Sam Roberts. I started a whole campaign. I made a video. Fuck. Nothing, man. She even commented. She was into it. Yeah, she said she was all on board. I did everything, man. I had her hooked. I, was, I, was, I set it all up. And WWE dropped the ball. It's probably because she remembers my snarky comment. That's this true. We got a lot of heat with Renee. I, I did. Producer That's my fault completely. I don't know Twitter. Just shits on her on Twitter, and I don't know why. I, not intentionally. <laughs> She's I don't constantly understand. trying to raise shit between Corbin and Renee, always prodding the bear to the point where Corbin started liking the shit talk but not participating in it. Wow. Producers all like bear in, look at it, she's fucking up again, and he's like, I like that. But you know what? I'm not getting involved. Okay, the first <laughs> comment is when she didn't know how to uh what was it? It wasn't broil. There was there was something she forgot she didn't understand how to do. Yeah. And uh Is that a great argument to be made when you can't remember the thing that you're saying that somebody forgot? Well, one of it was about her trying to figure out a smoker, and she had burnt her food. Yeah, it was and the a other smoker. One was she couldn't figure out how to make an espresso. So uh, the smoker one, that's when I said Bar- to Baron Corbin, I I added him and just said, Help her. yeah, please, please. Uh, no, I w- actually wasn't even trying to be mean. I just said, hey, maybe Baron Corbin can help out. And Corbin responds with a gif of the idiot a GIF sandwich. Of yeah, of. Uh, yeah, the idiot sandwich one. You guys know it's like, what are you? And he's holding the bread. I'm an idiot sandwich. Yeah, and That's so the, it's so good. The next one I made, she definitely took as a dig, and so yeah, I yeah, because after I, that, so there's the espresso one, and and <laughs> producer at Corbin going, she's doing it again. 
and he's all like, oh yes because she didn't know how to use she's like wait does this mean i have to get a grinder an espresso maker and that's when i said corbin she's doing it again yeah, and then she's like lay off me man she's like give me a break i'm trying to figure it out yeah and all and corbin did was just <laughs> like the little shit talk just like yeah Cor- corbin was the only one who liked my tweet and then everyone else including cesaro liked renee's yeah and i was like all right everyone hates me yeah, they shut us down uh let's see so cheers to renee young man wherever she goes i'm sure it's straight to the top cheers yeah absolutely also i want to say this um if if y'all know how to make an espresso how come i never had espresso at your house we have an espresso machine it's in a box but all you wanted was ginger beer which you didn't like and you didn't tell us till we stopped having you over yeah yes yeah you you lied the whole time oh well, now we've got yeah, Cesaro's espresso yeah, beans Cesaro's coming, espresso so, beans, so. Oh, you bought. <laughs> we'll have to see You're it. the one who lied about liking ginger beer, and we gave it to you every week yeah, for like a year. Yeah, you let us poison you so. for a you month. What? You made right. my fart smell minty fresh, or whatever. The- they always do. <laughs> they always do. Let's see. It's the so nicest smelling thing out of me. We don't have. I don't have anything else news-wise per se, but I have stuff about things announced with NAEW. Are you cool with us moving on to that? Yeah. So here's the deal is neither Clump nor I watched AEW this week because it was was Wednesday Wednesday. Night Dynamite Part 1 on Saturday night's mid-card event after the basketball, but it was sometime going to be around 6, but if it moved, it was because the basketball game. So it was after basketball on TNT, Wednesday night, Saturday night, Part 1 of the two-week extravaganza of one night of Dynamite. Yeah, there's too much algorithm to – compute when the hell to watch i'm sorry that's and if you as viewers are confused by this like i am a a fantastic answer was watching fighting with my family that was a a much better use of my saturday also takeover was saturday that was a much better use of my monday all right (laughs) um yeah, so I ended up watching Takeover because it was apparently at the same time, and I was I just was not able to find time to get back to watch it. So I do know a couple things that happened, but as long as we're gonna talk about AEW for a little bit, what do you think about AEW opening up for live uh, audience members? They've opened them up uh, for ten to fifteen percent capacity. I think it's as low as thirty bucks a ticket, and they were splitting it up into pods, so people could go with groups of however many. I don't know how the pods worked necessarily, and they found online that people were, oh my God, how could this happen? People were selling tickets and trying to flip them online. That's impossible. How could that ever happen? So AEW puts out this statement and Tony Khan says, this is unethical. We're going to do everything we can to shut it down. We're relying on you, the AEW fans, to tell us about the tickets you're trying to sell behind our backs. Please let us know. And I was like, ooh, they're going to catch every one of them. It makes I, me wonder if they've been to a show recently. Like, it makes me wonder if they've ever had a fan. Oh, okay. come on. How would you not think people are going to flip it? I mean, to be fair, like, I think, like, I can, I can, I, I that part, yeah, like, understandably, this shit's going to happen. So you yes. need to own it. I think what you, you know, you can hope for the best and then say, yeah, well, this is unfortunate. The simple answer to this is if you're going to have packages of people, then you sell it as a package and it like they did they sold it as Uh, a package and then online people people were selling the packages broken up yeah well then you need to make it so that they can't be unbroken and fuck these people i mean or the 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 not resale stuff because what was it how many tickets have you bought and i've seen a few programs where when you buy the ticket it cannot be moved and the person's name who's on the ticket has to be the one to show up yeah, and like they have to show their ID. I've been to a couple shows like that. Not a lot, but I've been to a couple where if you buy it from this particular website, you have to show your ID at the door and you cannot transfer it. I've seen I it. I mean, yeah, like, I mean, at Universal or at Disney, like when you have an annual pass, they fingerprint you and you have to show an ID. Like, it's it, it it's not that hard to do it. I, I appreciate, at the core of it, I appreciate the thought. I understand the desire to bring in fans, to bring in that that noise, that energy, that excitement, and to connect with your people again. However, yeah, you can't be surprised when people do dumb, shitty things. We unfortunately 
learned that a lot this weekend. We've we learned- seen a lot of dumb, shitty fans. Yes. It's our whole week's theme is dumb, yeah. shitty fans. Doing Maybe that'll be the, the name of the episode. Why is every fan got to be so dumb and crap? I don't even know. If, at that point, I feel like once you're doing shitty things like what we're about to talk about, you're no longer a fan. You're just yeah. a douche. Yeah. The worst and thing me, about entertainment is everyone who likes it. And to <laughs> me, like when you do something like this, all that you're do, all that you're accomplishing in buying split up tickets for these pods and in selling these and splitting up them up is hurting this industry hurting what you care about or supposedly care about more because yes. as you know one person has something and spreads it this happens i mean but bottom line person, yeah. none of the people who were doing this are people who ever would gone into the show anyways everyone's the first one on the sneakers app to buy the sneaker to try and get it online to sell it for a hundred dollars more yeah. remember the bray wyatt box the one i got for forty dollars and i bought it on a whim i was like oh hey guys check out this new bray wyatt box it looks pretty cool i bought one and by the time both you and kevlar had clicked on it it was sold out and I went, oh shit that's yeah. crazy we go to on ebay that forty dollar box is selling for 250 bucks 300 bucks a piece before it had even been mailed out and those are the kinds of fans not fans that fucking drive me mad. The people who, who their their quote, everybody's got to have a hustle, and I'm just trying to make a buck. Your dollar's not worth more than my dollar. The end of the day. So people who go, oh, I can buy this thing, and then try to take advantage of a fan who's passionate is just a shitty person. And I'll tell you this. Supply and demand does not mean I supply the product, so I demand the price. It's actually reverse. And I've seen so many people say that. We're going, oh, it's supply and demand. I can ask for what I want. And then you see shit not sell. Demand is yeah. how much people want it. And supply is you trying to meet that need, not make manufactured scarcity, which is the other bullshit thing. When they put yeah. out 200 of this one thing, creating a scarcity, driving up the want, and then having people go, oh, I have it. I can demand what I want. That's not how – that's not economics. Yeah, it's it's assholery it, it, nomics. Absolutely no, it's it's you it's, it's it's it brings up the worst in people. It's the it's the people that take advantage of 2020 and buy all the hand sanitizer they can from all the stores they can. Yeah, understanding that this is going to sell. Yeah, it's it's shitty, terrible things. And me, the frustration is it's fucking dangerous. This in this yes. year in this climate and understanding it. We just, you know, there's an article I was reading today from uh, the New York Times. They just did a study and they found that one fucking conference, one conference that occurred in January, at, like for a big, you know, industry in Boston, contributed to spread in almost every state because it was like like an, like a multi-level marketing conference. This, you know, just doing that and. It's one thing for it to be AEW, like, yeah, we're going to sell tickets to fans and, you know, you'll be in groups and it's individuals. That would be horrifying. But for this to happen, and you know what would happen if it spread and people got sick? It's not going to be the the fan. Yes, they're going to blame the company. They're going to blame the industry. And people already are trying to. I've already had the conversation with people who don't really know wrestling core. Like, you know, it's really stupid that they're considered an essential business. And it sucks because I shouldn't have to defend something I care about. And more so, I really shouldn't have to defend it when, you know, they're trying to do something pretty noble, entertain people, you know? They're really trying to do something that's really great uh, at the end of the day. When people at work tell you why is that shitty thing uh, an essential business, do you ever look at them and just go, you realize we're at work right now, right? Hmm. Do you know what we do? Because you and me have similar jobs in that when people say, oh, essential business and talk shit about it, I go, you're on the clock for this company. You want to talk to me about essential business? Mm -hmm. This this essential business I'm in is the reason I need wrestling when I get home. (laughs) (laughs) This is why I drink on the air. (laughs) This is why I need wrestling 10 hours a week to get through it. Because of this essential business. So how about you lay off of Florida? I mean... <laughs> I'm drinking. We didn't even talk about it. Sorry, dork chop. Clump Scott, Starbucks. I've got Jameson Cold Brew. 
And Limited edition, back on the shelf. Don't know how it happened, but I'm going to drink all of it before producer gets a sip. That is the one that I I need because I know the second it's bottle coffee. Yours. You don't have to mix anything with it, and it's delicious. So good. So good. I will say uh, I decided this bottle's mine, and you get the other bottle. That's how we figure it out. Oh, okay. Yeah, I had, to, I had to stock up on this one because it's so good. It just, we just go through it. Uh, it is. It's just so good. So I agree. Oh. It's AEW who takes the hit. Now, my only problem actually with any of it, I thought it was a little dicey trying to get in fans. I was like, I don't know. We've already seen that go bad with WWE. We've already seen AEW getting flack for sneaking in fans, not telling anybody. So now that they're telling people, you're like, okay, all they're doing is being more honest, which is something that they always pretend they're being when they're not. But I don't think the approach of tell us fans who are doing it let us know i don't think i thought that was kind of a bullshit pr move that didn't have a lick of authenticity behind it it was how how, what do we say to make people think that we're doing something about it and we're really just not going to do anything about it it's so much easier to just say if you bought these tickets and we find like you can be an asshole here and that's more justified and fair if you come in and you're attempting to split tickets or we find that this has been split you will not be admitted say that ban them yeah. If you bought this from a third party and we see that, you do not get to come to any AEW show again. Yeah. We take this shit seriously. How about a zero tolerance from our fans fucking around? Yeah. If we're not to, like, going if... to be, we're not running a sloppy shop. Mm-hmm. So fucking don't. Go ahead, Tom. Yeah. Like, if you're, it, exactly, don't run a sloppy shop. Get your fans involved by, in a sense, making them have a reason to give a fuck. You know, like if you make people understand, hey, if you ever want to come to the show, you better help us to run this. You're part of this and make it a or else. I'm cool with that. I think that makes total sense. You know, yeah. it's it's self-policing. It's, you know, it, you you go to a party and you see somebody get it, grabbing keys to go drive and they're drunk off their ass. Self-policing. I'm responsible yeah. for your ass. Don't do that. Also, I wanted to throw out there as you were talking about Jameson. It's my two-year sobriety anniversary. <laughs> Today's your two year. All right. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> Cheers to Clump being sober. And all of you Drink listening, off, uh, cheer. <laughs> yeah, Clump. put it back. Anyone listening who's also sober, cheers to you too. Yeah, you too can drink vicariously through us. Yeah, <laughs> I'll drink for the both of us. We're not just your wrestling friends, we're your drinking buddies. Get your yeah. drinking buddies t shirt at prowrestlingtees.com slash wrestling on the rocks. What? Is that too much to remember? Go to WrestlingOnTheRocks.com. There's a link. We got you covered. All right. Sorry. <laughs> sorry. So that was my only problem with AEW is it didn't sound authentic. Speaking of AEW, there was a few things. Oh, GR Lunar, chug that water. Yeah, yeah. So as we talk about AEW, there was one other thing I was going to talk to you about, but it's in here. Dorkchop had a few things to say because I asked him what was good on AEW if we both missed it. He said um, FTR versus Private Party was a really good tag opener. Said, oh, man, I just realized how dark you are on there, Clump. Can't do anything about it now. Uh, FTR continues to impress me since I didn't watch them in, in WWE. I'm finally getting what why people like them so much. They really made Private Party look better than usual, even if their moves still take way too much opponent cooperation for my taste. And I agree completely. My biggest problem with Private Party is it's so clearly a dance and not a fight. What I really like about FTR is they make it look more like a fight. So that is a match I'd be curious to watch. I saw a couple move sequences that didn't really draw me to make sure I saw it, but I don't know. FTR is really is two of the best. They, they look good. They look snug. They don't do a lot of, of goofy shit, but they make people doing goofy shit anchored, right? So some of the best matches I thought they had in WWE were against the Usos. And they are fly super kick party types. They fast tags and running in and out and diving in and jumping out. They're very fast paced that way, and, and FTR is not. And so I thought that their their matches with the Usos were some of the best. So I wouldn't be surprised if their match with the Private Party was phenomenal. Yeah. Uh, it says FTR came out with Tully and he had on some other new jacket. So I guess it's an official thing as well. So we got the Tully and, and FTR, which sounds good. Did you have something to say about the, that last bit there, Clint? What I was going to say is like I, I agree with uh, that statement about like being 
uh, too much cooperation and what I like about FTR. But I would say it's not just a private party issue. It's really, in many ways, an AEW tag team division issue. And I've liked more and more we're seeing less and less of that done. Yeah. Um, and and it's, it's, it's unfortunate because it's not that all of their tag teams do it. It's that all of the tag teams we see seem to do it. Like, it's yeah. Young Bucks, it's Private Party, it's uh, Lucha Brothers. However, um, SCU isn't big on it. Uh, Page and Omega aren't huge on it. They're not FDR, big on it. Butcher and Blade aren't. And we need to see more of them. We need to see more people working with them and less, yeah. you know, working to have these happen over and over. Or at least tone it down. Make it special, you know? Yeah. Uh, Dorchop agrees with you, says Clump, about the current 18W tag team meta. Uh, I just use Private Party as an example since they are the worst at it. They are, they're up there for sure. No, no, he used I PP. honestly think he's, he's what? PP. He yeah, he said PP. PP. Did that get censored? <laughs> no, Did I just, censor it? Oh. I just like I just like the sense I used PP as an example. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> which I think is a good way to describe a lot of their tag team matches. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, let's see. I saw the one comment. I'm going to come back to it. It says, Kenny Omega continues to go down the heel route. And after the match with Dark Order, he went to powerbomb someone on an open chair before being stopped by the Bucks. Really loving the teases of the cleaner style Kenny coming back. I I think I would like hearing that more if the Young Bucks weren't involved at all. I think the Young Bucks bring nothing to the table. I think they're over the top, goofy, cartoony. They're clearly acting. They're as goofy as it gets. There's nothing about them that screams authentic or genuine. And I don't think I even buy them into trying to protect Kenny from himself. Well, I they're, think they're, they're just not good storytellers. They're just flat out not good storytellers or talkers. They come off as people who are goofing around playing TV. They're they're meant to be this very like very juvenile, you know, and they work better as heels. So it makes more sense when they do when someone being a heel. But them as faces is kind of weird to me. So them blocking Kenny is weird. I mean, I can get them, you know, trying to be a conscious, but inherent in their role it's like adam cole adam cole as a face would suck because adam cole is a heel you know you need some some people need to be heels like the miz is not great as a face he's and I awful don't think as a face and we've seen him try yes i don't think the young bucks work as faces i think they work better as heels i think they work better as you know juvenile um silly overacting heels you know is that, that their that, thing? Maybe that's just yeah. it. Maybe I've never seen them presented as heels. I just always hated them. <laughs> so it's like I could see how they could be heels. That doesn't feel yeah. like a stretch to me because I boo them every time I see them. Mm -hmm. uh, Dork Chop says Young got, Bucks are better got, as heels. Everyone here got over as heels. They got over like how a great heel gets over certain fans. However, well, the Bullet Club was all heels, right? Yeah, that's it's a Gaijin heel stable. However, it got over and people got way into it. But I think we've lost that. You know, yeah, they're still dicks. The thing I loved about Kenny was the cleaner because Kenny as the cleaner was a very smart, like, asshole. He was a, like, an anime nerd that was brought to this level of, like, intelligence and, you know, skill that you're like, oh, fuck, I like this. So um, how to explain cleaner to me specifically. Not the idea of the character as far as, like, oh, he's mean and asshole and that. The, the moniker cleaner. I don't think I get that bit. Like, I understand the monster among men, right? I understand the beast incarnate. The cleaner, I'm just not sure on. So a lot of the Young Buck names come together as uh, components of, like, a mob group. Like the oh. Young so, okay. like, you have, yeah, the Tokyo Pimps, which is uh, – Okay, right. God damn it, yeah. I forget his name. Sounds like um, Austin Powers more than the mob, yeah. but okay. Well, but you have um, uh, Bad Luck Fale is the underboss. Machine Gun Carl Anderson. You know, these different kind of like yeah, mob, yeah, yeah. mafia names. The cleaner is like a cleaner in a mob in a mob crew. He comes in and he was the Cleans best up shop. machine. Yeah. yeah, and he all leaves nothing left. His matches are amazing. Everything's out there and they look great. And I thought what made him a unique heel to me and always stuck out with me is he was a gaijin heel a foreigner heel 
that spoke the language and knew the customs better than anyone so he could oh. connect with this crowd in their own language and then shut them up in Japanese, which is fucking cool, you know? That's cool. That is cool. I like the idea of that. I don't know how that translates entirely to America, to be quite honest. Mm-hmm. I think he's going to have to find, find – maybe that's why they've held off. Maybe he's been really trying to work on that. I mean, if he's the greatest that we've always been told and we're not seeing anything like it, maybe he's honestly been holding back and trying to find out how does the cleaner translate to America because he can't just be a white guy nerd and have it mean the same as it means in Japan. So I wonder if he's been working on it, tweaking on it. You know, how do we get there? Yeah. So I'm okay with that. All right. All right, Dork Chop, I see you. Trying to get me all involved in shit. Let me see. He also says he loves goofy shit, and so he's really excited. Have you heard about this Orange Cassidy match? Mm. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. So that's you could just say no instead of start trying to Google it, because I'll tell you, I'll be honest. No, I'm, I'm, I'm giving you a long, because mm, I'm really done with Orange Cassidy shit. <laughs> God, I cannot stand Orange Cassidy. All right, door chop. Uh, so this is what it is. The Mimosa Mayhem match is set for All Out. The third match, the rubber match between Chris Jericho and Orange Cassidy will take place at All Out with a tank of Mimosa around the ring. Get it? A little bit of the bubbly with some orange juice? (laughs) Oh, my favorite thing about AEW is they don't do hokey shit. That's why Moxley came here, because of all the hokey shit at WWE. This is so much real. You know, the bit, the problem with WWE is they insult your intelligence. All right. All right, I'm, I'm back. Here's the thing. Here's the thing, Clump. I know you're not into this. I like how you have to, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, I know you're not. You don't have to defend this. I'm like, what you fucking hate it to me. I'm, like, seething. Go, yeah. Go ahead. So here's the, here's the deal. Yeah, all of that shit talk aside. Because I know Dork Chop's going to love it anyways. He loves the goofy shit. And I'm okay with that if they would just say, hey, we're the goofy shit wrestling company. Okay, cool. Then I'm going to come here and watch goofy shit. It's all the other. It's the way they try to present themselves and then be something else. I don't dress like a ref because I've never refed. I don't maybe not ref a lot or definitely not as much as I used to, obviously. But you got to present yourself a certain way. This isn't just up for the show. This is who I am. All right. I'm not going to tell you I'm a certain person and then be someone completely else and then go, why don't they like me? I know why you guys don't like me. It's because I am who I am. But (laughs) first off, Jericho Cassidy 1 was okay. Jericho versus Cassidy 2, just flat out not good. Why are we doing a third match? Why are they putting this much effort into Orange Cassidy with Jericho? And why are they putting this much effort into tearing down Jericho's persona, making him an absolute joke of his own self. He's a fucking comedy act of himself. He's a parody of himself. Why would you do that to the great Jericho when he could be putting over talent like Adam, like uh, um, Hangman Page? Yeah. Why don't we have three matches with Hangman Page where he talks a serious story about, listen, kid, you know what I mean? Like, why doesn't he take the route of the the grizzled vet instead of trying to be I bet I can make as many jokes as this other guy who's jokey like how many fucking joke t-shirts do you need Jericho why don't you put over somebody who fucking needs it or deserves it that's how I feel about that like if I, I, I agree with you I feel like yeah parts of Jericho's persona as the you know shitty over the top silly heel are great in small doses we've seen so much of it i'm really craving the jericho that was you know in a feud with Shawn michaels where he was or he, when he first showed up to ew when he first showed up to ew as the the was it wasn't the prior was it i i didn't like uh, i wasn't as into it but i liked it i, I mean, liked I it liked like more him, than i like this i liked him when he first showed up at njpw where he you know, had such a huge pop, but then he started putting on makeup and, or putting on makeup and shit and looking like like a reunion tour for like a Norwegian heavy me- death metal band where they gained a shit ton of weight. I 
didn't even mind that as much. I think it's the bad jokes and the cool dad gimmick that he's trying to do that really bothers me about it. And I don't need a third match between the, the two of them. I don't. Yeah. If, if they think this is selling me on All Out, it's really pushing me away from it. And now, it's funny because Dorkchop says, um, well, first off, he said yeah, about what you said before. Cody was the best as a heel. Kenny is the best as a heel. And Young Bucks are best as a heel. Hangman is the only one out of the bunch. It's a better face. He said, Kenny Omega is basically Mr. Wolf from Pulp Fiction in wrestling form. And I, yeah. I get that now, and I think that's I love I really love to see that when that comes around. And he says Jericho is ten thousand percent getting dunked, and I'm here for the memes. And I get that, but I think that's all he is now, right? And I think that's what bothers me. That's what bums me out about it. Like it's okay, we can laugh at him, but I don't feel great laughing at Jericho for this long. Yeah, like, you know I mean, because I'm not like... laughing with him. I'm laughing yeah. at him for this is what he's done. Except meme that. daddy Jericho. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's what Montez Ford wants to be. I can't say it's, this is exclusive to Jericho. You know? I would say Montez Ford does it better. Because it's at least a little bit more original. Maybe. You know? Maybe. Like, it's it's a different take on it. Yeah, it's, yeah. you know, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't get everyone. Like, you guys don't like it. And, you know, there's times I really don't like Montez Ford. But... I can get it. It's different. It's new, and I appreciate that it's there. Or as Jericho, it's it's Uncle Barbecue. Yeah. You know, I just at first when I heard they were doing a third match, I was all like, "Oh, that's weird." I wonder if they're trying to make right because they fucked up the last one so bad. <laughs> and then I heard it was surrounded by a tank of mimosa, and I went, "Oh no!" They just want to see how much dumb and dumber they can put on one segment. Jericho can't get past this. And these are the little bits that I say. I don't know if creative freedom is really all that good. But um, although meme daddy Jericho, I get it. It's funny to me. GR Lunar says, okay, Sam. He's calling me a shill. Grim Reaper, if you're in the chat, defend me. <laughs> uh, let's see. Here was the other thing Dork Chop wanted to say. Because I've had my rant about the Mimosa Mayhem match. And it might be funny. But it's not going to be the kind of thing where people are going to go back and watch the Mimosa match. Go check out that classic. The way that people talk about Jericho matches as classics when he was in WrestleMania and his matches with Shawn Michaels and his match with Undertaker. No one's going to talk about his trilogy with Orange Cassidy. When they asked Jim Ross what it felt like to call the trilogy of Ric Flair, and then they asked him to compare it to the trilogy of, of Kenny and uh, Okada... And he says it's tough to, to feel a difference because they're so great in their own ways and they're, they're so different. He's like, and I wouldn't pick one over the other. They're never going to say, what about the trilogy of Jericho and Orange Cassidy? Yeah. That's not going to be a topic of conversation. And I just – and this is it. This is, I guess, where it really comes from because I think he's still capable of putting on that level of trilogy that would make someone say that. Uh -huh. But he's just not doing it. And he's given up. I think he's just like cashing in a check, man. I think he just doesn't give a fuck. I think he sees yeah. what's happening around him, and he thinks easy money, man. Easy money. I, that's honestly, what it looks like. I've honestly felt that since he's left WWE, period. When he went to NJPW, like, initially, him versus Kenny, I was like, oh, fuck, this is going to be amazing. And I was rather disappointed in the match because it felt like... It was the first time I was, like, looking at this, and I was like, I don't feel like your styles work and i didn't knock kenny on it i felt like it, it felt like a situation of somebody being carried because it like i was like okay jericho's it felt like jericho's being carried i feel like he could do valid work in a in the right capacity with the right person yeah or as a talker but i don't feel it's serious the other thing and did you listen to the new day podcast this week i did not Okay, so the New Day podcast this week, not to give you um, – uh, it's The Miz. Um, and it made me really like The Miz. And okay. not spoiling anything here, but one thing he said he talked about, like, as a heel, he likes when, you know, to him, he feeds off people sh being shitty, people being angry, people calling him terrible. And that coming up, and as we're talking about Jericho, and I think of how Jericho does podcasts and talks about himself – I don't see that. I don't see a person who feeds off what shit gets him. 
I see a person who's trying desperately and is in Rockstar Tour mode of trying to do the classics. He and has to be beloved. Yeah. And he has to be beloved so much that he can – that people will just tell him he's good. Like when people say that Jericho is the best heel in the business, no one means that. No one. There's no way you can mean that. There's no way you can mean that and like wrestling and say he's the best heel in the business. There's no way. All he does is get cheered. All people do is pop when he comes out. He's a huge baby face yeah. who makes cartoon jokes like he used to. And you go, oh, that was a good dig. All right. The Rock was also not a heel. And he was all about the good digs and being an asshole. There's a difference. You know what I mean? I think that's what that is. Yeah. Let's see. But I agree. I think that he could be bringing somebody to this company about telling long story, long, long form stories. I mean, the Festival of Friendship is one of like he thinks of that as one of the highlights of his career. And that was almost a year long storytelling that he mapped out. So bring that to the table instead of this. You know, this is the kind of stuff they're already doing on their own. Don't try to be more of what they're doing. Show them how they can tweak it and be next level. Uh, Dork Chop says Brody versus Cody was insane. No one expected that outcome, and I'm super interested to see where this is going out from here on out. For a show on different than usual, I didn't expect a title change, so I popped for it. Uh, that's cool, too. I like the idea that he was excited about the change. Oh, hold on. Um, all right, we'll get to that in a bit. We want to talk about Brody and Cody for a minute. So you know how WWE used to have the um, Saturday night's main event? Yeah. So the main event for this one was Brody... Lee versus Cody for the TNT title. So all day long on the internet, I was calling it Saturday night's mid card event. <laughs> people, yeah, people hated it. <laughs> so good. And someone else brought it up because last week that one guy on the line was like, um, when Cody said, Oh, I don't think of this as a mid card and this isn't like a mid card thing. There's no real th such thing as the mid card here in AEW. And then that, that dude comments, he goes spoken like a true mid carder for life. That's yeah. exactly what you'd say if you're never going to be out of the mid card. And then Cody responded with, you follow me, man. And then he goes, yeah, because you're my favorite mid carder. <laughs> <laughs> and it was like, the, in, uh, I felt like the internet stood still for a second. Everyone just went, because <laughs> you're so like, oh, that's kind of not an asshole thing to say. And it's kind of the most asshole thing you could say. Yeah. Like it that was is crazy. The most evil thing ever. It's the most honest thing. <laughs> um. Okay. Cool. That's actually. I'm really excited about what Dorkshop just said in there. Oh, yeah. Amazing. But it was like, it was amazing. And then someone else brought up. He goes, Cody dropped that mid card title real fast after being called mid card for life from that guy. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I'm not sure where it's going. But Dorkshop says, uh. Not sure if you knew since you didn't watch, and I didn't know this, and I didn't watch, but Brody absolutely fucking squashed Cody in like four minutes. That's tremendous. What have you been saying this whole time? Cody keeps going to his limit. What I like about this makes Cody look even worse. <laughs> Not only was everyone taking him to his fucking limits, but the first time an upper echelon mid-carter goes up against him, can't handle his own for it at all. Shits the bed. Luke Harper destroyed you in four minutes? Oh. Man, Luke Harper had a hard time with, like, Ziggler and Zack Ryder he had a hard time with. <laughs> Just... <laughs> the action figure guy. You guys know him from the Sweet Life of Matt and Cody t-shirt where they look like Disney princesses together? You know, the new big star at AEW, the action figure guy. Yeah, Luke Harper had a tough time with him, too. Anyways, I'm just fucking around, obviously. Uh, thank you, Smog, for coming in and giving us a sub. Pa -pa -pa -pa. Hey! I know that's uh, Yeah, Smog Ouch. is a good dude. Um, he is. Always happy to see him come through. Let's see. So, yeah, so I guess Brody beat the shit out of him. I love it. I do want to see that now because I, I – I, man, have they been struggling with Brody Lee as a character. And I think asserting some dominance over a guy like Cody would mean more if Cody was positioned more like a, a threat and less like the kind of guy who can't seem to get through Marco's stunt very well. But <laughs> but Jungle Boy is a tough cookie, so maybe Brody Lee will be taken to his limit by Darby Allin too. 
So I do think that it could mean more if Cody had been booked the way we've been talking about. But I do think that that's fantastic, and I think it's what this this program's needed for a long time is some squash matches. I think ripping the title away from Cody on a Saturday night's mid-card event, Dynamite Wednesday Part 1, 2, 3, um, I think that's really cool. I think that's really smart. I like they, they put out a picture of like a shattered TNT title, the old one, and it was also looked like the leather was shattered, so I was really confused. I was told that didn't happen on the show, though, so it was just kind of an after fact where you kind of like chopped it all up, I guess. What do you think about Cody dropping the title of Brody Lee? Do you think that puts him over? Do you think that makes him? Or do you think it's up to Brody yeah. Lee to make that title mean something more now? It's up to Brody Lee to make Brody Lee. I think, it I think makes so, too. Brody I think Brody Lee, like, oh, yeah, cool, you got a title that looks good. And I think Cody did a lot to make the title mean something. Brody Lee can make or destroy this title. Yeah. Brody Lee can I make think or destroy himself. Brody has to continue on that route of dominance. He needs to have a match with Jungle Boy that's like six seconds. He needs yeah. to have a match with, with Darby Allen that's like two and a half minutes. Darby Allen does a whole bunch of stuff, and then Brody Lee breaks him in half. He needs to assert that he's actually a, a top motherfucking guy who just happened to lose against Moxley that one time. You know what I mean? And then you'll make that TNT title not look like a mid-card title anymore. But as long as everybody has 20 minutes with the champ at the beginning of the show, the title's not going to mean as much. So I think it's really cool. I'm really glad they did that with Brody. I hope something comes of it. I hope they stop giving him a microphone, and we'll take it from there. Let's see, they took Cody out on a stretcher and Brody made Anna J choke out Brandy when she came out to sob over Cody's broken body. <laughs> Whoa. All right. Okay. He says it's a good moment. All right. I'm interested in that. I am 100% for anyone, literally anyone, choking a crying Brandy. What? That. What? Not gonna... That's not going to sound good a... out of context, so All don't right. say that. Well, it could be any Brandy. <laughs> yeah, don't become don't our Sammy. That. Then we'll have to like release you for a week and bring you. I back. didn't say I wanted to do it. I definitely did not say that. I don't want this to be uh, what blows us can, up. They can't hear us. <laughs> um, I don't see anyone saying that. Someone says they can't hear us. Can't hear me. Yes. Chop. Who's saying that? It's not in the chat. Uh, smog, but in messaging me. Oh. Uh, I looks like I see our audio piping in. Yeah. Dork Chop, can you hear us? Dork Chop, can you hear me? <laughs> yeah, no, I'm hearing it too on yeah. our on our feed. Yeah. Huh. Audio good, leaner. Clump is a little low. Oh. Bring Clump up. Lower than you think. Bring him up. Oh, baby. Bring him up. Let's see. Um, Dork Chop says Clump is low, but I have my headphones on too. Yeah, put them all the way up. Make them 100. He's not going to yell. He's a clump. Uh, Dork Chop's got it too. Tell Smog to actually use headphones or to turn on volume. I'll tell him too. <laughs> How about that, Dork Chop? <laughs> Lunar. You clumped up. You clumped up. Let's see. It's fine here. Okay, so that does sound really cool and pretty intense. Anna J being part of the Dark Order and actually doing something Dark Order-ish is way more compelling than Anna J standing by and Brody Lee like she's doing what she's told. I think it'd be cool too if they acknowledged like we've been fucking up and now this now we have something and then go way deeper into it. Like be dark. Like I like Dark Order. I wanna like Dark Order more. Be assholes, be dark, be evil, keep doing this. I'm cool with it. You know? Yeah. Uh, here's another bit. Dork Drop says one last thing from Dynamite that was inter interesting is that Brandy and Allie actually lost the tag tournament finals to Eva Lise and Diamante. Uh, which was surprising since we all assumed it was put together to put Brandy over. I still think, in a sense, they're putting Brandy over by having her go all the way like that. But mm -hmm. I see what you mean, and I think it's pretty good. Most likely, they're just going to lead to Brandy and Alley feud. Uh, a Brandy and Alley feud, which is man, but still. But that's probably going to be on the main show, not going to be on YouTube. Let's see, Fabtina says, I feel like Matt Hardy is still there. He hasn't checked out. Totally opposite of Jericho. Dorcas says, Matt Hardy's looking like a killer lately. Uh, he wants yeah. to end Sammy. I'm liking the stuff I'm seeing about him just wanting to fucking kill Sammy. It's pretty cool. Uh, and Fabtina says, feels like he actually cares about what he's doing and how he connects. I think Matt Hardy's always been very good about like taking a a situation that maybe may, that isn't ideal and making it something like, you know, he 
and, and this could work out. I hope that, that this has a good ending, unlike the Matt Hardy Edge thing. Mm. You know, yeah, that that this there's there's yeah. a parallel there. You know, I I want to see this end with Matt Hardy winning, mainly because I also really fucking hate Sammy in what we've done to Sammy. I don't necessarily even yeah. blame Sammy for why I hate him fully. I he could full fair, fully have done a lot to truly accom you know appreciate his actions in the past. I mm-hmm. hate him because of how he was brought back and that's kind yeah. of fucked up, you know? So yeah, I want yeah, him to just for a while. Yeah. I I um so it sounds to me like you want Matt Hardy at the end of yes. all this to bang Sammy's mom. Mm-hmm. Because at the yes. end of the Edge thing, he didn't get the girls. You want him to get Sammy's mom is what it sounds like. Yes. All right. That makes on, sense. On, it like, makes on, sense. As a vlog. Like, he's going to – I'm going to post my vlog to Pornhub, Sammy. Yeah. Um, oh, hey, Smog topped off the sub goal. Pow, 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 pow. Oh, we hit our goal somehow. This is fantastic. I think it means we're going to maybe unlock another emote. I just added a rock emote for anybody who's in there. It says bring it. Putting that in the chat right now. If you guys are listening on podcast, if you join us on twitch.tv, you can definitely subscribe there. And you got little emotes and stuff in there, little little prizes for you. Also on Twitch, we had a prediction show for SummerSlam this past week. Just over the weekend, me and Kevlar, we're not going to post it as a podcast. That was just a little treat for our Twitch subscribers. So yep, Only Twitch. Only Twitch. So... I do think that's about all we can talk about a show that we didn't watch, <laughs> but I do appreciate Dork Chop keeping us up to date. Here's the other thing, though. NXT without AEW side by side got 853,000 views. AEW without NXT aside on a Saturday evening got 755,000 views. They're both up from where they were. Dynamite got roughly two twenty three thousand more than it had on the previous Wednesday, and NXT had roughly two hundred and thirty four thousand more. I mean, they all fluctuate. It seems between six and eight is kind of where they sit. Six and nine. So what uh, I thought was uh, the uh, most uh. compelling about that is that here they were both un un. Oh my god! I Words. Need I need a drink. <laughs> you only had one. Mm-hmm. Here they are unopposed, and they're getting roughly the same exact numbers. Very close. Every same numbers they would have gotten any other week. You know what I mean? We've definitely had weeks like Great American Bash. I think was uh, eight hundred and fifty something to seven hundred and fifty, and then the week after that it was eight hundred for AEW and like six hundred fifty for NXT. I think the really cool thing is that that means for one, if AEW went to Saturdays, they'd probably be fine. They don't have to sit on Wednesdays like they were kind of like really locked down. I'm not saying that NXT has staked its claim and deserves it. I'm not saying that either. But I'm saying it doesn't look like it matters when you guys air. You're getting about the same viewers. (coughs) Follow-up question. Are you or Clump planning to go back and watch what you missed on Saturday from AEW? Is that from you or someone in the chat? from the uh, producer i'll probably watch watch some of it i'll probably fast forward through bits of it and i'll probably watch um anything matt hardy anything cody i'm i'm telling you right now i'm skipping the jericho stuff dork job i'm skipping it but i'll probably watch some of it clump do you think you're gonna watch anything from this past saturday no but that's not knocking either show that's just i i don't do that i don't tend to go back and watch stuff like this weekly i tend to go back and watch highlights or yeah you know things like that so i I don't want to say that like saying like yeah i know fuck that i'm not gonna do it this doesn't sound like a fantastic show to me but then a lot of the week-to-week stuff i'm like i'm not gonna watch this you know going back for it unless it's something truly amazing and yeah yeah. and i will say the over i overwhelmingly i heard nxt was a tremendous take-home show for nxt and that it was i was told it was it it was perfect for how you want to lead into a pay-per-view and I was told that AEW was a tremendous dynamite, one of their better dynamites in a long time. It just happened to be on a Saturday night against TakeOver. So I do think uh, – oh, heart, you guys, and wow, did I win anything from Smog? Yeah, we got stickers and poker chips. We'll get that address – or he probably already got one, huh? Yeah. We, well, we have new jars stickers. Of, we have jars of farts. We got jars of farts. We got the new Resting on the Rock stickers. Did he ever get a Matt Brown sticker? 
Yeah. Oh. Yeah, we have a bunch of poker <laughs> chips in front of the yeah. bell on the table yeah. there. Actually, no, he did, and then um, he did, and then it got taken from him. Really? We got more. We can hook yeah, that we, up. Oh, sweet, cool. Um, yeah, send Clump your info. We'll send you some stuff. Um, but so I thought it was interesting because when you see them unopposed getting relatively the same exact numbers, I mean, and there's people who are going like, look at NXT, it did so good. Oh my God, AEW shit the bed. And then you see the other side going, NXT couldn't even break a million with nobody. And then AEW doesn't goes, yeah, but they did more than last week. And it's like, guys, I have a feeling we're the only ones yelling about this. You know what I mean? Like, when yeah, you see that their numbers are largely the same, it makes you really wonder, is there any kind of an actual ratings war? Or is it just something made up for the internet? Yeah. Uh, are non-wrestling fans tuning in to either show, I think, is the bigger question. Yeah. I think the fans are the fans that they're going to have. And we've even said that it looks like there's about 100, 150,000 people who flip between show to show. It looks like this week they just, a lot of them watched NXT. Because honestly... That 150 was watching NXT. But I think that a good chunk of those ones that swing because they like AEW, not just because they're trying to see what's on both, they all watched on Saturday, you know? So I don't I don't think that there's maybe even uh, an actual ratings for it. Clump, did you have anything to say, or are you just going to keep Googling? I mean, I agree with you. I think it's – I don't think it's – either show is really bringing people in. They're doing great. They're making great content here and there but we're not bringing new audiences. And I don't know if that's not a a knock against them or maybe the new reality of this. Um, When we're looking at TV production and the nature of old media, do we need to really uh, just understand, hey, this may not be the boon to ratings that you want it to be. I would also say that to TNT... This is still great content. Yeah. You know, and that, that's something to say is this maybe shouldn't be seen as a ratings war. This is a fantastic pool of people to watch. And it's the same for TNT or for a USA. Yeah, this isn't bringing the numbers that Raw does. This isn't bringing the numbers that SmackDown does. But 800,000 people watching your TV show live when more and more people are watching shit online is still good. You know, so that's solid content in my oh, eyes, you know. Yeah, 100%. Whoa. Whoa, Smog just gifted a bunch of subscriptions to a ton of people. Thank Names you, Names I barely recognize. <laughs> <laughs> How many people are watching this channel? Don't even talk in the chat. Guys, jump in the chat. Yeah, people don't <laughs> actually want to engage with us. They just want yeah, to see how... Yeah, are not here to engage. They just want to see how dumb we're going to be. Yeah, but Smog, thank you so much, and thank you for all them. Any of you who are willing to get in the chat, you're going to see a, a championship title next to your name. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, your animation came up. Did it come up? Yeah. <laughs> Is it me? Yeah. That's me. Check it out, Smog. With up in the air, top. With air horns. Yeah, with air horns. Oh, wait. I think that's going to happen. It might happen more than we'd like. Let's see. Let's see. Oh, lunar sub now. Oh my <laughs> God. Okay. Um, Animation came up, but no names. All right. I think you can mute the box. Remember, you you mute the middle. If you're one. gonna, sp- you know, if you're gonna spend this much money, you could also just give me RAM. Like there you go. That'll mute the rest yeah. of the air horns. <laughs> no, don't give him RAM. Yeah. I'd- just give me like <laughs> Thank a, you. A, a Ryzen 7 processor. That's that's also. And if you're listening on the podcast, sorry about all the air horns, but yeah, sorry we about just, the air horns. but we just got a lot of cool stuff happening on our live Twitch show, yeah. which you should tune yeah. into. Check out our live Twitch show, WrestlingOnTheRocks.com, dude. And oh, it's just it me baby, strutting back and forth over and over again. Yeah. So funny. <laughs> all right, so that worked. <laughs> so good. Oh, I can see names. Are you seeing the names? Yeah, I see the name. Oh yeah. It's just very small All right, we can change that. We can we can change the font, make it a little bit bigger. Thank you guys for subscribing. Uh, if you guys uh, are listening on the podcast, check out our YouTube. Subscribe there. That helps out a lot too. Um, not as much as the subs on Twitch help, but it helps. Let's see. Just downloaded more RAM. Download more RAM. That's a good point. Dorkshot makes a great point. Clump, you're listening. Just download more RAM. Got it. Yes. Download That's how more this RAM. works. Can I also yeah. download a, a graphics card C- or processor and 
lot like motherboard yeah okay cool yeah um let's see he says from the wish.com <laughs> animation's a little hard to see i can make it bigger i mean i thought it was going to be i didn't want it too much in the way but now i realize it should be more in the way so end of the story i don't think that clump no can you stop time for just just a second okay. yeah that's all we it's hear lot, every time just it's a constant thing sorry sorry just the, pause at least yeah we also turned up your yeah your we volume, turned up your volume unfortunately so yeah, that's we had you low enough it wasn't picking up now it's definitely picking up i'm sorry let's see i got that old pc if you need it clump oh smog's got an old pc for you you can get it uh let's mm. see mm. all right so the temptation oh, to type idea. and ask about that um so I think that there may not be an actual ratings war. I think that it's something we've made up for the internet so people can feel like they've got sides. And I think what we've really yeah. learned is that people are liking what they like. I think, because Fabtina brought it up, we'll go back up a little bit. Fabtina said, uh, I don't know if that's AEW's goal. And then to WWE, I think is just, I think it is because they are trying new things to grab those casual viewers on Fox. I don't know if they're going for the Fox thing, but let's see. So if you guys want Wrestling on the Rocks to stream games... Oh, yeah, maybe get that PC. So I think what WWE is really doing, AEW and, and WWE NXT, they're doing two completely different things. AEW is trying to give a product for the fans that really like their local wrestling shows is really what it feels like. We want you yeah. to, to watch wrestling like you're watching your friends wrestle. And I think what NXT is trying to do is really try to highlight the kind of stuff that's happening on the indie level on a high level, right? So the evolves, the GCW type stuff to a degree. But I think that they're trying to they're trying to capture the indie audience who maybe doesn't get evolve on their TV because I don't know where I'd find it. You know what I mean? It's not on our it's not one of our local channels. I don't even have cable. They're trying to provide that indie level atmosphere with that high level performance to a larger audience. So I think that they're just doing two different things. Does that make sense? Yeah. Does it sound does it sound like I'm shitting on one of them? No, I, I I agree with you. It's I think the part of it that makes it sound like being shit on is not by us, it's by unfortunately the weird Yeah, yeah the weird group of fans and kind of the people that run it, you know, at least one of them like they, they like the excitement. I think everyone does, and it makes something fun. But this ultimately is, you know, it's it doesn't have to be a ratings war. It's just a good yeah. show. It's, it's awesome, you know. If if Lucha Underground had this type these type of ratings, they'd still exist. Yeah, you know? and they're not trying to compete with anybody with what they do. It's a whole different, a whole different presentation. Which and really, I, I thought AEW is going to be a lot more like Lucha Underground than it is. But I do think that I feel like that's what we have is is I feel like, like with more clarity than ever that there's just two completely different shows doing different things. One of them's a hundred percent come play wrestling with your friends, and I don't, I'm not trying to mean that shitty, but bottom line, AEW has a ton of choreographed, heavily choreographed stuff and a lot of tongue in cheek and looking into the camera and breaking the fourth wall. It's uh -huh. you're kind of just goofing off. It's a little bit of a parody of wrestling in general. It's kind of a parody. So if you want to laugh at wrestling because that wrestling is funny and goofy, you watch AEW because you're going to get really great athleticism. You're going to get incredible move sets. You're going to get exciting matches and you're going to be able to laugh at wrestling for a while. Yeah. I think NXT takes that indie level serious side where this is how good it could be in these dark, dank rooms at your local show. I think they're both presenting a different side of what you can get at a local show, but I think those are two completely different sides that they're getting. It kind of yeah. ties into my conspiracy theory a year ago that the companies are actually working together to create a war for ratings purposes. Yeah. Well, for eyes on their company purposes. Yeah, That okay. was my theory. Um, yeah, and I'm, I'm kind of getting on board with it, but, um, anything else you want to say about the Wednesday night wars as it were? I think, I, you know, 
not really. You know, we we yeah. I didn't see anything on NXT to jump into. I think NXT Takeover was fantastic. Um, yeah, let's I think if Takeover. You, well, I was gonna say, can we do a two minute pause real quick? You gotta. All right, go. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. Now I gotta fill in two minutes with the producer somehow. Talking about, we're both having some Jameson coffee, which I poured way too much, and I'm trying to water down with co- with, with actual coffee. I poured this much. Yes, that's the right amount. That is I, a full glass. That's what you need. I pour. I poured a full glass of that Jameson cold brew. Yeah. And it's yeah. Yeah, it's strong and it's, it's good. good. It's good. It, I could, I could definitely kill it, but I don't know if I should. Yeah. <laughs> no, you got to do it while we're on the air because by the time we get off, you're gonna fall right asleep. And then you're not gonna finish it. No, so that's with wine. That is with wine. That's, that's put you Because right so, I drink a lot of wine. If yes. anybody knows any has any connections with Jameson, we're looking for a sponsorship, perhaps a cease and desist. You can all be reached at restingonrocks.com. There's contact information there. There's all of our links. You can find our shop. You can find our YouTube where you can subscribe. Shout out again and thank you to Smog in the chat for making us hit our goal and opening up a whole new emote, which we can start uh working on tonight i think and thank you to dork chop for helping us out with all this crazy cool twitch stuff that we don't know anything about yeah yeah thanks shout out to dork chop for helping us bring all that stuff together and the, the air horns and stuff maybe i gotta adjust that but yeah thank you guys so much for all of that um i thought i had another line and it's gone <laughs> you're already forgetting stuff yeah, I just need another Oh, and thank you to Dork Chop for bringing up all that stuff by AEW. We really were going to escape past it. I was going to talk about the Mimosa match. I was going to talk about uh, Tony Khan and his PR scam. Yeah. <laughs> uh, oh, I don't that's know. It. We were going to move on. I was going to mention Cody and Brody, but uh, I'm glad to know more about that stuff. And it definitely, uh, we definitely want to talk about what we can. I know what we could talk about. Um, yeah. Just keeping on with AEW a little bit. Okay. Um, do you have any, any uh, new dream matches that you want to see? Because NWA is now trying to... Yeah, we got Thunder Rosa on her way to AEW to over. face with Hikaru Shida at All Out. I am actually pretty excited about that. It also makes me wonder, because NWA is not paying anybody but Nick Aldis, so they all need work. So I know that they've opened up and let they're telling everyone to go get work where you can. I wonder if there's part of um, Allison Kay. It's a little bummed she dropped that title when she did, because maybe it could be her at AEW right now. Right, but I would say that seeing Allison K in AEW doing some stuff would be tremendous. I was not on the Allison K fan club necessarily, and then I saw her perform live against Thunder Rosa, and I went, "Oh wow, she can go, and she is good." I think I just hadn't been exposed to enough stuff. So I liked her tude in NWA. I liked the the oh. attitude that she she brought forward, but it does look like yeah, they're they're. Uh, Having more and more connections. I mean, obviously, we, you know, Coke Cabana go over and Kingston, and yeah. So, so we know that their talent's been going over, but I'm wondering how, how much more is the company going to get bought out by, yeah, or I'm what's what happening? We're going to see next because that whole weekly thing. I, don't, I haven't heard much about since they said it, but Dork Chop even brings up. Also, Eddie Kingston seems to be forming a crew with the Lucha Brothers and Butcher and Blade, and had another top tier promo. I oh, did thank see God. that clip. I don't know how I feel about him with Butcher and Blade. It just feels like such a ragtag group, a bunch of random schmoes together from the indies. But, hey, it might work. And you know what? I don't think what they're doing with Butcher and Blade is working at all. So I'm excited for it. Yeah, I guess it got pulled on that. Um, So I am am kind of excited about that. Uh, Butcher and Blade, Lucha Brothers, and Eddie Kingston – Although, and Eddie Kingston as the leader, I think that that could be that could be cool. So we were as I was asking uh, Marsh, producer lady here, uh, if there's any dream dream uh, matches you want to see with NWA and AEW because it does look like that's happening. Th- that's happening. Thunder Rose and is going to have a match with Sheeta at all. I my yeah. my dream match is kind of uh, I want to see FTR and. Um, James Storm and Eli Drake because we all we love all of those guys. Yeah, I think FTR and against Eli and James Storm would be killer. Yeah. Any NWA dream matches for AEW? Hmm. We also we got all the good guys. I think they are. <laughs> yeah, you fuckers did. Yeah. 
Um, yeah. Oh, uh, Aaron Stevens, Colt Cabana. Okay. Um, <laughs> all right. NXT TakeOver 30. That would totally oh, fulfill Dork Chop's silly shit. <laughs> Yeah, you Dork. and Dork Chop talk about that. That'll be great for you and Dork Chop to talk about. Dork Chop would love fucking that. Fucking question mark in the corner. Yeah. Okay. You just shut. You guys shut the fuck up. I'm all I'm talking. Karate. <laughs> yeah, I gotta talk to Dork Chop. I'll be right back. Yeah, I'm typing it in. Yeah. Um, Are you with me. Man. Did you? Okay, so I mean, obviously, what a weekend for debuts. We can hit up NXT and SummerSlam. I'm happy that Finn Balor went over and looked strong. It's mm-hmm. a little weird. I don't know where they're going with Timothy Thatcher, but I'm going to be honest with you. I don't think it takes much for Timothy Thatcher to look like a fucking threat again. The dude's yeah, a it, mean it looked guy. good. It was, I think it was a good example of putting someone over because Balor needs wins. You know, you can't, I, yes. we can't do with Balor what we did to Balor in the, Balor in the main roster. You got to mm-hmm. give him some wins. You got to have him be dominant. You have to, I think his role here on out in his career and it's a good space to be in is, along with Gargano and Ciampa, which I know I'm going to get shit on for saying this, are there to not necessarily hold a title, but to be really close to a title and make people look good as they win or lose as a stepping stone. You know? Yeah. Like a, a more successfully done Chris Hero. Catch yeah. Your son yeah, 100%. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm, I'm all right with all that. He's having a soda. Yeah. I'm trying to open it carefully, champ. Yeah, he did all he could. He did the best he can. You yeah. can't knock him when he does well, even if it's sloppy. He's he, he's still clump, even when he's silent. That's maybe the nicest thing anyone's ever said to me. Thank you. Yeah. Um, I did think the match was fantastic, though. I thought that match was great. What did you think about the ladder match? I really honestly liked it. Now, going in, I had read who was going to win. Okay. Which I, I'm not I, mad about, know, I'm not yeah. mad about him winning. No, I'm not mad about, uh, I'm not mad about who won it in the end. Do, do we want to just say, we know like priest won. Yeah. <laughs> but going into it, I was like, okay, well priest is going to win. So I was watching it and I liked it. It was a match that it, I don't think drug on. I was, it kept pulling me back in like, damn, this is going, but it was a good match. It did have, a few spots in it that I thought were a little bit of hokey bullshit. Yeah. You know, I thought, I thought we saw a little bit of, uh, we saw one spot in particular where it was, Hey, I'm going to stand here awkwardly so you can get ready to hit me with your thing. But yeah. overall, I really liked that. it. You had the Cameron Grimes getting the splits and then Bronson Reed looking underneath him and then being like, "Never mind," and walking away a little ha ha moment. And yeah. I get that. The reason I think that that, and I'll be honest with you, I'm not a big fan of those spots, but the reason I think they worked for people in that is because of how much that match was going a thousand miles an hour. Yeah, it brought pauses and levity. Um, and they yeah. weren't they weren't near as like Cameron Grimes was I think the the biggest victim of hey, I need you to be in spots for me. Like he got yes. up on the the tr- or on the uh, apron for a cancellary spot and I'm like, Do you really have to be there? Like why would you be there? But then I'm like, you know what? It's okay. It, it worked for me. Um, I think Bronson Reed showed up, and so did Cameron Grimes. But Bronson Reed, in his in this like past couple weeks, and then in this match, he may not have won, but he was the star to me in this match. Yeah, that's I our thought, dude. That is our dude. Yeah, that's our dude right there. Watching the match, so a lot of people were telling me that they thought this was the match of the weekend, and so I kind of went in there expecting a lot of a lot of. A lot of good stuff. But I do think I like wrestling different than a lot of people like because, honestly, I was really underwhelmed by it. I felt like it was a 1,000 miles an hour. I felt like because they were going so fast that no one was sticking their shit in. So it didn't look like anybody was touching. It looked like a bunch of paintbrushes. It looked like everybody was dancing around each other. Uh Gargano moves so fast that he's constantly running to where he needs to be awkwardly, like not making any sense on why he would go there. And he's constantly messing up the moves because he thinks he's got the precision of Shawn Michaels, but he doesn't. He's not the dude who you put over the top rope to get one foot on the ground and come back over. He's not like with Brett and Luger where you're going to send Brett over and he's going to tell Lex, trust me, and our feet are going to touch the ground at the same time, and it does. Gargano's the guy who thinks that's going to happen. He's like the Rock and Big Show 
where the one goes over clearly before the other one so they didn't cut to that angle. You know what I mean? Yeah. I think one of my favorite spots, but also it was a knock on Bronson Reed in terms of how they set it up. And also I will knock the announce team. So when when Gargano did the one last beat on Bronson yeah. Reed with the, the, the ladder around his head, I thought that was a really clever spot to do a weird modified DDT into a ladder where the ladder knocks you. I was like, that's clever. Yeah. I was immediately then like, but why the fuck? Because I said it before it happened. Like, why is Bronson Reed holding the ladder like that? Because that's a really dumb way to hold a ladder around your head like that. Yeah. To try and hit people. It never, whenever someone does it, I immediately think, oh, cool. All I need to do is hit the ladder hard enough that you lose grip on it. And then you're fucked. Yeah. Like, 100%. Gargano did and it worked out but I liked it I liked a few different spots that were done and I was like oh this is neat because it's not let me get you set up for it but then now looking back I think Gargano was having to do these in rapid succession so rapidly moving around this series of people that it didn't give them the impact they should have had because they were really impressive yeah. um, they should have had they, about half the moves in the same amount of time Yes. Damian Priest had a couple fantastic spots that I think were kind of overlooked. Like when he um, did that springboard kick, like yeah. uh, I thought looked awesome, except for the fact that Velveteen Dream had the wrong leg on it. So he kicked a free leg yeah, and then fell and it just looked weird. Um, I, I also think feel Dream like, messed up a bunch in this one too. Yeah, he didn't look great generally. And I also feel like he wasn't given enough room to work, which I'm okay with because I didn't need to see a lot of him here. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I, I felt like, like Damian priest and Bronson Reed showed up. They both looked awesome. Their stuff. They were sticking it. Their stuff mm -hmm. looked stiff. It looked good and believable. All of it. And I thought, I thought they did just did a tremendous job. And I thought there was a whole bunch of other stuff happening around that match that, I didn't, I didn't think added a ton to it. Like I said, I think they should have had half the moves in the same amount of time. And I, I think I would have had time to get into it, but I was just watching it like out of breath and not cause I was excited, but just saw like, what the fuck? It was like, yeah. Have you ever played Sonic the hedgehog games? Yeah. I never liked them. There's just, he... you're flying around and you get shot into stuff and then you just go somewhere else and you're over here now. And you're like, yeah, did I, I get coins there? I think I got coins or something. And then you're over here now. And you're like, did I get new shoes? And then you just, <laughs> That's yeah. what watching the match felt like. Where it's just all like, man, I I don't know what the I, fuck is happening. Who's who's winning? Even is anybody hurt? Because everyone's back up again. Yeah, I, I can get that. Like it, it did at times feel like, god damn, these people are invincible. They can't lose shit ever again. But mm -hmm. no, like I, that is actually a really good summation to me of some matches where it's like playing Sonic, and I don't like Sonic because it's too fast. It's like okay, calm, yeah. slow. I I need to be able to do things because I don't know how to get all the things yeah i have to process stuff yeah no so. i agree with that but i do think it was awesome for damian priest i do think we have not seen the end of bronson reed and i think that uh fab tina said it best i could see him maybe in some years in a pay-per-view with lesnar i think yeah i think reed is i think he's he's uh, you want to talk about limitless mm -hmm. i don't think there's anything holding back bronson reed um honestly, i think his, also like in ring and his mic work is tremendous one, I think, like, you know, he, there's a lot of comparisons to, you say, Limitless Keith Lee. Keith Lee was in quite a few matches for big belts before he got one, and that's fine. I think it's a great way to build them up, and for Bronson Reed getting this push, it's a very similar trajectory to Keith Lee, and I like it because it's showing him, like, oh, yeah, fuck, he's, he's in a good spot. I could see him in a tag team. I could see him in a good feud with someone and just keep keep building and then yeah you know next next pay-per-view oh he's going for the u.s title and he wins it fuck yeah you know yeah 100 percent. yeah he's also um, super young yeah oh yeah bronson Reed is just a kid he's got a ton of time to do a bunch of amazing classic matches on the grandest stage of them all if you ask me let's see so a couple other things that happened on nxt i don't want to just like graze over them but you know dakota kai and eo did a did a tremendous job together i thought they were awesome 
uh, Rhea and Gonzalez pushing their story a little bit more, I think is fantastic. The women definitely showed out. To me, the big news on this one was one, Pat McAfee, and two, Karrion Cross winning the title. Mm-hmm. What do you think about Karrion Cross winning the title? And then we'll talk about Pat McAfee before we wrap up uh, NXT. So, because I've not seen nearly as much NXT as you have. A lot of our times watching the show, Eric doesn't watch NXT. This was really my f- introduction to Karrion Cross, and I really liked him. I liked the match. I liked the pacing. I liked the character. I I thought it was different and neat. And I was like, oh, this is fucking cool. And he looks evil, and I liked him. So yeah, I was way into it. I liked it. it. I, liked, I liked the slowness of the match, the, the way that he... Uh, the way he made everything that Keith Lee did into like his own moves. And then the promo video for him, because I hadn't seen uh Karrion Cross prior. I'm like watching uh this package. I'm like, fuck, this does look good. It really built up in a way where it's like, okay, I totally am down to see him get like be in this match. It makes total sense to me. Yeah. Um I also liked um this is weird, but the, the music that they chose for this NXT by having Metallica on mm-hmm. was great, um, even though it was totally the same. It sounded just like St. Anger, which was what they used for the 2003 SummerSlam, and it was the worst album for Metallica to use. <laughs> it's like, nice. oh, we're, we're doing alternative rock Metallica, not Metallica Metallica. Hell yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's funny. Well, she um, keeps jumping in, and like, she gets like, fussy. Yeah. Um, I'm I'm happy with Cross winning it, and especially because I thought that that meant Keith Lee was moving on to the to the main roster. I know a lot of people were shitting on that, saying that Keith Lee was a transitional champion and wasn't good, and doesn't make him look strong, and he looks kind of weak now, and he didn't really have much of a, a title reign. He had a title win, and I get all that, but honestly, I don't know what you do with Keith Lee in there. That you can't do with him on the main roster, but I do see that you. And what's Keith Lee really going to bring to NXT? Yes, you know what I mean. I, I feel I, like he's got more to bring to Raw than he has to bring into NXT. I feel like Karrion Cross has a really great edgy evil character that they can really run with for quite some time in NXT. Where I feel like, I feel like we saw enough of Keith Lee. I feel like even though he wasn't in the main title picture, he was the main talk for the last year. I think that Keith Lee has had the best build of anyone they've done in NXT. Now we need to see it maintained on the main roster. Yeah. Um, if this pitters out, it's going to suck because he is so fucking talented. But yeah. comparing him to other people, for in, like I, I see Keith Lee being like a KO. Yeah. In terms of how they they brought him up, because um, Keith Lee didn't need that title for long. Keith Lee has had an impact on the main roster already. And he had a great build that made sense through NXT. He had matches that were, you know, in the middle of it, you know, him and uh, Kushida. He never had slow matches. He never had a slow, slow burn. He just kind of, or a a step down. He just built up and built up and always had this momentum and it worked. Um, So I, I think it's perfect for him. I think having him lose this and then be on NXT again would be like, what they did with Johnny Gargano. Yeah. And I do think that Keith Lee's character was more of a, I want to get to the top, not I want to stay on top. And Adam Cole's character was very much, I want to stay on top here and set a record. Like you got yeah. that impression from him as being, I'm a new era. You want, mm-hmm. you were going to talk about my era as, as my title reign as the, a time frame, where I think the Keith Lee character was, I want to prove that I can get to the top of this mountain and then I'm going to climb higher than that mountain. You know yes. what I mean? So, so I felt like for him to drop the title this, this quick, uh, yeah, it's a little bit of a bummer. I'd like to see him have maybe one or two solid defenses just to really say I am the, the champion. And I don't really count the one with Dijakovic cause why would you? But I do think that he's got more to offer the main roster than, than he's got to offer NXT. And I feel like yeah. the carrying cross has something that NXT really needs. Mm-hmm. You know? They need so, a, a okay dominant, scary heel. Yeah, like and Carrying Cross, he's also like he's he's young, he's new. I could see Carrying Cross going to the main roster in time and being like a a new Undertaker. However, I feel like we have a you know we we have the Fiend, we have other people that fill yeah. that role. 
he's fine in NXT, and I, it's interesting to see him in NXT. Um, yeah, it's going to be a so cool I'm, dynamic. You know, we almost oh, had him yeah. on our show last year. For real? Yeah, he was. Uh, I met a guy who offered him up as an interview for me when he was Killer Cross last year, and I told him I was like, I don't do interviews. I don't know what I would say. God damn it. <laughs> They're like, are you sure? Because he's in town. I can. You know, he's he's willing to meet you like right now. And I was like, eh, I don't know. I don't, I don't know what I would say. I don't yeah. know. I would have just this gone is... and like met him and been like, oh, this is like just like, hey, I don't know if I'll promote this, but it'd be really cool, like just to get to know you and learn, like talk to him, like as a ref. You know, could it didn't have to be an interview, just like a talk and see what he could do. But fuck, because yeah, is... then we could have had had a cool like dynamic with a dude who, you know, where they are. Yeah. Yeah, this is him. Why we are where we are. Yep. Ziggy Dice turned on an interview with Ziggy Dice. Uh, who was the other guy? There's one other one. Let me look it up. I have the notes Don't right here because I upset me. It. <laughs> oh, I was right here because I um, I had notes for it because I was gonna. Uh, was Eddie Mansfield. I was, to I was supposed to be on Sean Mooney's podcast, but I decided it was okay not to be. I was gonna be a guest. <laughs> And then Eddie Mansfield also. I almost got an interview with him. So that's why well, I'm not... we're. It's okay though, because it's only the first episode. Yeah. And by the time we get to episode two, we need to start talking about like, okay, cool. Like, throw. We'll, we'll work on this together. We'll both do this. Hey. This yeah. is why we have less than a hundred subscribers on YouTube. Which, if you want to help us out, please yeah. subscribe on YouTube. Go subscribe on YouTube. Easiest to find it through wrestlingonthemarks.com. Uh, so. Dorkchop says it best. Pat McAfee was the star of the show. For me, who would have guessed? I did. I guessed that. I've been saying since the beginning, Pat McAfee was my dude. I need some Cole Sucks t-shirts. I need for the brand t-shirts, tank tops, as you will. Going into this story, I was so excited for Pat McAfee versus Adam Cole. I just had a feeling that this was going to be something special and... I think that it was better than I could have thought. Yeah, I I will give Pat McAfee and Adam Cole had a fantastic fucking match. Pat McAfee did work. Pat McAfee made Adam Cole a face. Yes, he turned Adam Cole face, and they both sold the shit out of so much. Yo, Adam Cole did the best selling I've ever seen him do. Some yeah. of it was with just those, like, I call them, like, Bret Hart, Bret Hart looks. Like, because I always think about when Bret Hart and 123Kid had that match. And one, two, three kid like does an arm drag and knocks over Brett and Brett goes to get up and he kind of looks over at kid and kind of looks towards the camera and kind of goes like, Oh, and gets up. And it's just, it was like this little kind of like, okay, didn't see that coming. And it definitely put him over every time McAfee did something big and the camera cut to Adam Cole. He had this look like, what the fuck? Like, yeah. how did you do that? Like, who well, are you? Is this constant look he had just complete well, and disbelief. I like that you're getting that because that's that's been like my thing with Adam Cole. When I like Adam Cole, it's Adam Cole's facial expressions. Because Adam Cole, like he like Adam Cole in, and it's a fantastic meme at or a fantastic meme video. Uh, KO coming back at War Games and Adam Cole's reaction to it. Oh yeah, is the best. Like I'm like, that's why he's wor-. like, that's why Adam Cole is where Adam Cole is, and that's what I like Adam Cole for because that is the best. Like. Oh fuck, face ever like no, nah. yeah. like, like what? I, yeah, it's like, like I, 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 actually you know what it reminds me of a little bit. When I was in high school, I was in I was a star of a play, like the main character. I could see and that. And I got a couple other small roles in other like acting classes and stuff. And the the I forget what you call the acting teacher, the person who's in charge of all the theater stuff, but that drama the teacher, director, the drama director, whatever. She came over to me and she goes, you play confused remarkably well. <laughs> <laughs> and I was just all like, I don't know what you mean. But that's kind of what it, I, I think about with Adam Cole, you know, is it's just like you play shocked and yeah. terrified at the same time. Really fucking good. So we're going to keep doing that. We're just going to lean into that more and more. So I need to I want to point out something, too, because I was like. Ever since they they put up uh, the picture of uh, Will Osprey and Adam Cole, who are both built at six foot, and Will Osprey oh, significant, yeah. Yeah, yeah, no, no, Will Osprey. I was looking at, it, I was like, 
how tall is Pat McAfee? Because Pat McAfee towers over and is making fun of Adam six Paul for one. Being... And I am six one. Yep. <laughs> Pat McAfee I... is six one. Pat McAfee and I are the same height, and I need to beat Adam Cole because I need to have that picture of me just like this. Yeah, <laughs> I'm six that, one. That's a big ass inch, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. No, it's insane. Because I was tweeting that stuff when they were doing all their pictures next to each other. I tweeted out the Wikipedia pages with their uh, heights on it as a response to every time they had a picture next to each other. Because it was like uh, Adam Cole, build six foot. Pat McAfee, six foot one. And you're all like, that's like a six inch, one inch. This is why the like, Europeans what? make fun of the imperial system. I, I understand it if this is true. Um, I think it's it also, also how he convinced... Brit to be with him. Yeah. The way he measures. What? <laughs> what? Stop. What Maybe the... Stop. Nothing good. It's the ruler. He has no. that kind of ruler. Stop. Yeah. He's like, look, eight. Yeah. Look. Okay. She's like, that's the most manageable eight. <laughs> maybe, she add, maybe, she, maybe the build height is because they're adding that on. Like, no, no, you don't understand. All of the other six inches are here. Yeah, oh that's outward. God. Inches. You're dying. Okay. okay. Stop it. <laughs> or it's forehead. <laughs> uh, but Pat McAfee, Penises. holy cow, wasn't that fantastic? Yeah. It was. It was amazing. Pat McAfee, I, I couldn't believe it. I rewatched it today, before we went live, just so I could make sure I didn't miss anything. And whew. yeah, the Adam Cole facial expressions were tremendous. Pat McAfee's athleticism was outrageous. And you go, oh, of course, he's an athlete. But you also go, yeah, but, I mean, mm-hmm. come on. The dude just box jumped. So uh, someone in one of the chats I'm in did the math with how with the average space between ropes. And so that would have been a 60-inch base jump, just a box yeah. jump to the top rope. And he just gets up there, just boom. And it wasn't like he got up there and then, like, had to squat crazy to stand up. He was just, like, already up there. He's like, I'm, I'm here. This is where I am now. I'm up here now. And he did that as somebody who doesn't do this, as somebody who is not a trained wrestler, as somebody who doesn't do a lot of work. He's like, oh, shit, you're decent at this. Granted, he does look weird as hell because he's got tiny little arms, which I kept what? noticing. Like, oh, They're yeah. short, no, he... but they're big. No, they're I... not big. Dude. Got... Oh, my God. Clump. What you talking about, man? <laughs> he's got Adam Cole-sized arms. No, he doesn't. He's got Adam Cole-sized legs on his arms. <laughs> no, he I doesn't. Loved... I was like, he looks like a... I mean, it could be this. He's got fucking freakish legs. Like, he does oh, look yeah. like a... He looks like a poodle riding a hippity hop. I loved his his intro into what we're going to expect from this match. Just reminded me of just, like, old promos, kind of. Oh, yeah. God, yeah. yeah, he was the best at being a cunt. It was amazing. Yeah, he's amazing. He's fantastic. Uh, there was an interview they even had with Pat McAfee and Triple H, and Triple H said somewhere in there that um, Pat McAfee's a heat magnet and would love to do business with him again. Um, yeah, I but wanted he, to punch. Uh, yeah, he was like, man, I've never wanted to punch someone so rapidly of not knowing him. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was it was amazing. So no, one hundred percent. Pat McAfee was an absolute star. Um, well, except for somebody you you work, except for somebody you work with. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> mm. Mm. Um, but I do think that I'm sending you a picture of Pat McAfee's arm, and you tell me that's a fucking tiny arm. So I do think though that that kind of wraps up NXT Takeover. I thought it was absolutely tremendous. The whole show was phenomenal, really good. I thought Pat McAfee was a fucking star. I want Pat McAfee merch. I can't wait for the elite figure. I'm really excited for his Hall of Fame speech he gives in a couple years. And if they signed him and brought him over, man, no complaints. I would like to see him do more. Yeah, if they can have a Gronk shirt, they should probably have a Yeah, they got fucking shirt Gronk him. shirts. Um, SummerSlam. I mean, let's talk about yeah. the highlights for one. We didn't talk about uh, SmackDown or anything leading into it just because there's so much to talk about on these shows. Mm -hmm. What do you think of the Thunderdome? Thunderdome. I I like the Thunderdome. Thunderdome. Yeah. I'm into it. 
I like the I I like it. And then I mean, we're gonna talk about this over and over again. A fantastic idea. I love the execution of it. I like the idea of how to bring people in. I fucking hate people though. People are awful, man. People suck. Like it's like this is so cool. I love this. I love the. It looked weird to me, but it looked awesome. And then, like, Dude, I, I Pyro liked, in the audience. Yeah, people being excited like that was cool. I just hate that some people are shits. <laughs> like, oh, uh. yeah, yeah. People are awful. There's people putting all sorts of horrible shit in there. And you know what I sucks s- about it the, the most is this. One of the things that made Thunderdome so cool is that it was free. I registered and I was in for Raw. I was able to get into the sneak peek because I'm, because I'm part of the WWE fan council. Mm-hmm. Duty calls. You gotta do what you gotta do. You know what I mean? So I was there for the that sneak is, peek. That's a that's a ceremonial title if I ever heard one. <laughs> yeah, I'm part of the fan council. Man. They send oh, me God. surveys at the end of every show and go, What do you like? I'm like, Bailey. I'm like anything else? I'm like, I mean other stuff happened. Uh, uh let's see. Too bad the fans. Well don't you like AEW? Really this guy's perfect. Yeah, hundred percent. And it was it's funny because I know one other person on the fan council, and they're like, they didn't send me anything about SummerSlam. They sent me stuff about Takeover. I was like, well, they didn't send me shit about Takeover. They only sent me stuff about SummerSlam. I was like, I think it's because they know by my comments, I really prefer the main roster. <laughs> and he goes, that's fair. I always talk very highly of Takeover, and I was like, I think they know who they're sending stuff to to get the responses they want. <laughs> <laughs> so either way, I was happy. They sent me a link to be in part of the. Um, the trial day, the testing, the troubleshooting, as it were, where there was only like a hundred of us in the Thunderdome as they're doing these test matches and trying out entrances and camera angles and stuff. And it was really cool. One of the things they did, they brought to it was they, they brought to it um, direction because the first couple days people were not reacting at all and everyone was complaining. Everyone looks like they're just watching TV. Well, it's because they feel like they're watching TV. But it was really cool to hear the direction being like, hey, guys, here comes your champion, man. He's looking at you. What are you doing? You cheering? You giving me a thumbs up? What do you got? And you're kind of yep. like, that's right. I'm part of the show. And it reminds yes. you you're part of the show. When I went to the filming for NWA, every time there was like a break, we knew it. Because David Marquez would be like, all right, guys, we got about five minutes before we come back. we got to set up a couple things in the back. Go, okay. And we're all just hanging out, talking. And he goes, all right, guys, we're coming back. We're coming back. We're going to pan to you. I need you guys a lot of noise. Stand up, everybody. I need a lot of noise from you guys. Be active. We're on TV, guys. You know what I mean? Yeah. And we knew what was happening. So we're all like, ah! Everyone's going think, nuts on NWA, not because they just go nuts all the time. It's because we were I told think, you're part of the show. Yeah, yeah I think that's yeah, a valid... Yeah, supporting. Yeah, I think that's a valid thing, and I think it's a great way to put it. And I'm sorry if I, I cut off producer there, but um, I think we need to hear that because... It's, it's organic in a giant fucking stadium of an ass ton of people that you're going to get reactions because you have this crazy amount of people. You have things like pyro and lights and shit. It's going to happen. It's it's impossible not to. It's it's more remarkable to get no, no reaction at all when you yeah. have that many people. But when you're doing it at home and you're sitting there, it's – Like a lot of things, this is a weird time, so you kind of need a little bit of prompting, and I don't fault them for saying that. I think it's good that they learned about it, and I think people, because I've read people getting, you know, being hot about, like, well, they're expecting this, and they're expecting that, and they're upset about, you know, this. No, because you're part of the act now. You you get an amazing opportunity to be, be part of the show. Yeah, if you're in, if... You know, AEW isn't going to let you sit front row in one of their shows where they're going to put a camera on you and let you wear a Roman Reigns shirt. I guarantee you that, you know, I guarantee you NWA, anyone that was really, really prominent out front that was there, they were probably going to say, hey, if you had a bunch of WWE stuff, why don't we have you put some of this on, you know? Any, it's not bad, you know, and I think it's more than fair to say, look, I know you're at home. I know you're this. I need you to be part of this. You get the yeah. opportunity to because a lot of people don't. And that's mm-hmm. it's to me, it's fucked up. And I think, honestly, let's take the chance to get over the shitty parts of this now rather than be at the end of it, because there were some shitty things that happened. Yeah, you know? I don't want to give them too much press, but no, yes, no, absolutely, yeah. There was really shitty stuff that people were putting on their screens, people being proud of ge- getting kicked out because of stuff like that. Um, I had, uh, I don't, uh, it wasn't somebody I followed, but somebody who was like followed by a mutual. So I saw a bunch of these posts of somebody who was kicked out for something they had done on one of the screens, and all I could think was, 
why? Like, yeah. why are you trying to do that? Like, what makes you so cool? They just cut your stream, and then that's it. Uh, producer yeah. got something she wants to say. Yeah, I, I just think if you're doing that to any promotion, you are being a super asshole. If you're going to any, if you're an NJPW event and you're go, you're sporting someone else's shirt, you know, if you're yeah. and trying to get noticed for that, or if, or same with AEW, like. I just don't think you should be doing that for any promotion because you're not supporting where you're where you are. You know, yeah. go go online and complain, I guess. But you know, to be to do that at their event in front of their talent, I I just think is super disrespectful for any promotion. It's not yeah. like going to a ball game and having the jersey on for the away team because that's where you grew up. Because they're also there. You know what I mean? If if all of us got together, like ten of us. And got just straight WWE logo t-shirts and said, we're going to go to AEW this week. And we all just walked in together, eight of us. Are we really the cool guys wearing the other guy's shirt? Yeah. Or are we just the assholes who were trying to point out something? Yeah, you know what I mean? What are we is. here to support them? Or are we here mm -hmm. to shit on them? Because why did I spend money if I'm not here to support them? I know for a fact, even though like we joke about it and you, you're, you knock AEW a lot at times. If we went to an AEW show, you I would have, have a shirt. shirt. Yeah, you'd have a shirt for one of the for the teams, like for something for something that's there that you like. You'd find something, you know. That's... I have one. It's the elite. Yeah. In case I no. go to a show. Yeah. You know what I mean? It, like, I've got me, a it's... couple Moxley shirts, but I mean, like, yeah. To me, it's and I don't get why people have knocked like they're like, oh, it was a failure. No, it's a failure to the parts of our community that suck. I will say this: if you if there's an argument to be made for if somebody did something that they use this as an, as an example to say something that they, they truly had dis, disappointment over, like, I could see that argument being made. You know, there was, there was one specific sign. I was like, yeah, that's a message. I get that. I think it's maybe not the best place to put it. I think if you're trying to pull from your point here, that's a valid thing to do. However, there were things that were truly terrible to be put up and served no purpose and did nothing to, they served no message. It was just trolling and being despicable for the point, for the purpose of being shitty to a thing that, you know what? I'd like to have had the opportunity to watch this. And, yeah. you know, I would have sat there and been like, yeah, cool. Awesome. Thank you for the direction. I'm enjoying this. I would have been happy to, and I'm not going to show some of the terrible shit you did. And I'm sure there's a lot of it would have been awesome to see families to see kids but yeah. instead we, well, we saw, saw a couple but yeah yeah no and I, and, I, sorry i do think we also have to be a bit forgiving that we're in a time where fans are complaining that oh this is so boring we're just watching these matches in the pc we don't have the fans it's not the same without the fans and then what do they do they build you this entire Fucking beautiful <laughs> set beautiful set with just amazing lights and pyro and the first thing that happens is it just gets shit on and i just think it's like someone's like how can i shit all over this yeah if this was a w presenting this would this be different if this was njpw presenting would this be different i i just think we all have to kind of take a step back and be like look they're trying to appease us in the most basic way so yeah. You know, we, we kind of have there's to also, take a step back. Yeah, and there's a huge difference between supporting your team and shitting on other people who are having a good time. Wrestling fans are truly a un can be a truly uniquely toxic thing because this isn't just in wrestling. Shit, if you watch America's Got Talent, it doesn't have an audience. If you yeah. it has the same thing as this. If you watch basketball, it's this. If you watch an MLB, it's literally in some cases stuffed animals out in the crowd yeah and you're not you know you don't hear oh it's such bull you know it's it's so stupid it's weird that we don't have fans there i get that but you know what embrace the weird because if nothing else in 10 years if we have the ability to be back at this i'm gonna take a like when this is over and things are kind of in what we would have called normal before I'm going to appreciate the weird events, the weird struggles, the weird moments that we went through because this is something that we can use to come together and say, you know what? We went through that. A hundred percent. While I was in the Thunderdome, the two times I was, mm -hmm. I felt like I was a part of the crowd. 
Like yeah. you feel different than watching it. Now at first I understand why they need direction. Cause at first you do feel like you're just watching it because you're literally getting the same angles they're giving on TV. You're getting the same exact angles. Mm-hmm. You're not getting a bunch of weird cuts or like a shot from the stands. You're getting the same angles you get on TV. So it does feel like you're watching TV. One of the cool bits is when they go to commercial, you're still getting a live feed of the match. So when it cuts to commercial, you'll see it fade to black and then it comes back and there's no commentary. Then it fades to black, comes back, and they're like, all right, we're back. You know, and like they're doing it. But you get to watch the match in between as though you were there live. And I was like, this is magic right now. Mm-hmm. And even seeing the other faces in those crowds and giving the thumbs up, and you look at the performers looking into the Thunderdome, the abyss of the Thunderdome. Yeah. <laughs> and they're looking at those faces, and they're, they're, rem- they're remembering that they're not mm-hmm. – just in an empty building doing this they look and they go oh yeah i have fans out there you know what i mean like you can see that look on their face it's a little different uh let's see dork trap says shitting on wwe for the sake of it being wwe is lame as fuck the thunderdome is an inspired idea with a goofy name but it's still really cool 100 percent. when the thunder dude such a funny fucking name wwe Mm -hmm. thunderdome and i was like okay (laughs) you guys wanted me to laugh right like there's no way you guys took it seriously but Fuck it. Yeah, I like yeah. their f- their first GIF, too. Or yeah. GIF was, you know, Welcome to the Thunderdome. I was like, oh, they knew. Yeah. They had this yeah. prep. It was during awesome. the During the sneak peek, they had these two dudes on commentary who are just um, production. Mm-hmm. I say just production. I don't mean it, like, to be demeaning because what they were doing was tremendous, and they were hysterical. And they were, like, calling stuff in the match. He goes, I don't know the moves. Like, you know what's going on. He goes, it looks like a – it was just an arm drag is what that was. And you're like, oh. And, like, it was just really funny, the basicness of it all. And then at one point, the guy's all like, I feel like we haven't even, like, we got to talk about the Thunderdome. And the guy's like, we're in the Thunderdome. Welcome to the Thunderdome. And the guy went for almost a minute of screaming Thunderdome over and over again. Yeah. And I was like, this is amazing. They know it. They get it. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Fabtina says, we should all revel in the creativity that promotions are using to deal with this crazy time. And Dork Chop agrees. Yeah. I think this, too, of all the sports – all the TV shows, all the productions that are out there, this is the only one I've seen that makes you feel like a stadium of people are watching this. Yes. If I'm honest with you, this was the best way that this could have been done. And I think I would want this to be a permanent thing. And I'm okay with there being more rules for the fans. To me, with what we saw here, with the Thunderdome, I loved it to death because I don't, I, I'll make no, you know, I, I don't hide. I don't like the fans around the ring. I find that weird and at times upsetting because I see people trying to act like they're enjoying it and they might be enjoying it, but then having to be cognizant of, hey, how far or close can I be to these people? I yeah. get the goal of the excitement, but I don't like it. I feel weird by the captive audience i dislike it more than the empty arena this was perfect to me this was amazing amazing. because it was working yes do this and i i would prefer even a smaller version of this where we brought those screens into the performance center over nxt talent yeah get some talent there but i like this more shit we could have montez ford and uh Angela Dawkins coming through the screens and have some of the screens have cameras by them. So as they come out, you're like, well, what the fuck? As you see that, that would be cool. We could invest in this further and do more. And I would love that. You know, I I, I want to see more of this. If my hope truly is that this doesn't get ended by a few shitty people doing shitty things. And I hope those few shitty people um you know like aew should have we talked about earlier i hope their asses are banned i hope that they have i hope that they wwe bans them from coming to any event in some capacity like hey if you come you're not buying a ticket from us you know keep like doing stuff on the computer yeah no but um but but to this I, i i would say I would hope that if if you're coming, if you did that, yeah, not only are you, like, I would think it'd be cool, like, if they did something like some companies that we know, if we're like, cool, what we're going to do is involve a legal team now, and 
you know, you've just banned yourself. Yeah, yeah. you can go to a show if somebody's bought it. you a ticket. Yeah. I would love it if every single one of them got a piece of mail, mm-hmm. regular mail, that says you are no longer welcome at any WWE event yeah. to scare the shit out of them. Yeah. So that way they'd be like, they they know it was me. Yeah. You know what I mean? And if they come in, I, I would be cool. Like, if they came, like, somehow you come, it's like a friend bought you tickets. Yeah. Know that, because that's a, a unique feeling to be not allowed somewhere and be there and be like, oh, it's really cool. Yeah. And... If you're the kind of dumb asshole who does this, then sure enough, you're the kind of dumb asshole who's going to make a name for uh, make a, a scene of yourself. And yeah, somebody's going to go over and say, hey, you're not supposed to be here. Bye. You know, yeah. 100%. Cool I think zero tolerance on that, too, because you know what? Everyone's here to have a good time and everyone's there because they want to see it, hopefully because you're a fan. And if you're there to shit on it, you've got no business here. You're not part of the universe. You're not part of the family. You can go now. Yeah. We don't you need you here. Stop being entitled. Yeah, and I think the problem is that it's free. And I hate that that's the problem because I was so happy that it was free. The other thing that was really cool that they started doing is superstars were going into the room where they monitor stuff and talking to you through the Thunderdome. Kevin Owens came in and goes, hey, guys, I'm coming out of the next segment. I really need you to be loud. He's like, I, you got to be loud for me. You got to be clapping. He goes, if you're not getting kicked out of your apartment, you're not doing it right. You know, and he goes, and I see you. He goes, I see you over there with the KO shirt on. I love you. You're my favorite one in the Thunderdome. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it was so good. <laughs> Lana and Natty came out and they said stuff to us before they went on. Yeah, that was cool. The uh, uh, Who else? Dolph Ziggler said, hey, oh, hey, guys, you're going to see me in the underground kicking the shit out of people. You know, he's like, I'm just going to wreck it in the Thunderdome. He's like, I see you guys. He goes, I see you booing me. You one guy booing me. He's like, picture I hope to find you in the underground. You know what I mean? It was so yeah. funny. Picture it, picture it. Like, have like may, this is something, too, that like as a fan, dude, I want to go, go in like I would love it to be. Hey, at what we would call, consider gorilla or backstage, we'll have spaces where talent can like, like you can have in addition to your screen, like have arounds, and like you could have talent walking by, and it's like you know what, fuck it, I'm gonna jump in on this, and they can yeah, jump in. They have did. it be Mark that, Henry came love, out. Do that shit. Make yeah. I would love so that so much, and that would make me. I'd pay money to go do this. I'd be so pumped to do it. And the fans that truly care, the fans that are fans. I don't think they're going to be there and go like, you know what I want to do? I want to show a pic- a video of this or a picture of this. I want to show – because the other thing I think of is this. If I'm a talent performing and I look out at certain things that were shown there, yeah, that hurts. And at the end of the day, these are people trying to help us out. And if they see the most tragic thing that's ever happened in wrestling in the crowd, I'm not going to say what it is. You can go and if you watch the show, you probably already know what it is and yeah, see that. True. That's fucked. Yeah, like, what the fuck? Uh, and, and it was really cool. Dork Trevor says super dope. Really cool to hear them in there because we're sitting there and all of a sudden, like, it's a commercial break. So it just shows – you just see background of Thunderdome. You're not watching the commercials. You see network commercials, but you don't watch the actual commercials. And all of a sudden, we just hear, hey, guys, it's me. And you're just like, whoa, that's Mark Henry's voice. And he yeah. goes, guys, I'm going to be out later. I just want to thank you guys for coming to the Thunderdome, man. We love the excitement. Keep it up. we got a long yeah. show. And you're just like, what? And he said something like, you're going to see me out there. And he said something else. And he goes, because that's what I do. And we're like, oh. But like. Hyping you up. They hyped yeah. me up. Then one person was out there. He's like, oh, I see you with the red shirt. And, oh, you know, whatever. Uh, the only people who came in that I actually thought was not enjoyable was the Street Profits came through. And they legit just like ran through a promo. It didn't sound like they were talking to you or looking at you at all. It sounded like they were just reading a promo. And I was yeah. all like, oh. The point of right. it to, was to, to, fair, to get interactive with yeah. the crowd yeah. on a one-to-one, and they kind of didn't. didn't. But I really – sorry, if you don't mind, Calm. Uh, I just really appreciated that I knew in the back of my mind there was, like, a really big comfort in that everyone is being safe. You know, yeah. like, all of these all, – all of those little – uh, things that the stars are doing like they could have just recorded from home yeah. you know like yeah. i love knowing that oh they didn't have to go out during this pandemic like and exactly and the thing about the street profits was it sounded like it could have been recorded from home where everyone else sounded like they were definitely talking to people in the thunderdome real quick imagine go back to clump dork chop says he's got to go he's running out he's doing a rare second stream tonight dork chop oh you're yeah. a star superstar every time we hope to have you back on the show sometime thank you for coming through man uh go ahead clump Dork shop people. I was gonna say, 
like and I agree with producer there is the fact that we can do these things and bring people in and allow f that to occur without having to be in danger so much better to me than the crowd because that is interactive this is a new amazing thing I mean imagine what you could do with this we've brought in like talent that maybe we shouldn't we could say hey they shouldn't be here you know yeah like yeah. um Ric Flair imagine like you're getting to do this and like what if Vince says, hey, congratulations and thank you, and says, I love that shirt you're wearing? Yeah. What if Stone Cold? What if Stephanie? What if Triple <laughs> I know. I, I let that go, and I was like, shit. Yeah, no, what Vince does Stephanie? that. Yeah, maybe yeah. he No, he was doing a Vince too. impression. That was just his Vince yeah. impression. Hey, I love that. Yeah. Hey, pal. Shirt. <laughs> no, if, we, if the stories were true, he would fart and say, it smells like eggs. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Keep the windows like, locked. Yeah, I wish you could smell this, but that would be so perfect. And that could also be a way for those performers that aren't able to or don't feel comfortable or, you know, can't be there. Hey, I know, you know, we feel like we would love to have you be part of the company. How would you feel about jumping in to the crowd here or talking to the crowd? If you hmm. feel comfortable doing that, we could try and make that work. I would love that, you know? Yeah. It does sound like they're trying to, or that there's rumors, rumblings, that they may go to like uh, preferred personnel as it was, or um, like vetted fans, essentially, where as you go into the Thunderdome and you have clear video and you have stable video and you clearly are being very reactive you get put on like a favorites list and at some point when they have enough they're just not going to let other people in and it'll be the same group of people for every single show as long as they can come out because of the kind of shit that we've been seeing and if they do that cool i hope they keep it free but if if it takes paying to weasel out those people then i'd be willing to pay a certain fee just because of how fun and exciting it was after the first one i did dude i my adrenaline was pumping afterwards and all i saw was like Weird little matches. People keep coming out to other people's entrances because it was just a sneak peek. A hundred people in the audience and you saw a bunch of faces the same over and over again. I didn't even see myself out there. And it's like, by the time it was over, like, my adrenaline was pumping. I felt like I was at a live event. You know what I mean? Like, you do feel connected to it as you're going through it. It's really cool. If you allow yourself. You know I mean? You can always put those blockers and be like, oh, it's so down there. If you allow yourself to just fall into it, have give yourself that escape be in the thunderdome i'm in the thunderdome yeah and then the guy says hey guys we need you to thumbs up fuck yeah i'm gonna thumbs up you know what i mean Dude, like hell yeah. i'm doing it i'm thumbsing up like mm -hmm. all right you know but and i think they're doing that to train people that that's what they need but i think that they don't want to do that i think they want to get away from be giving people direction that would have people doing stuff you know what yeah. i mean we need you to yell at the camera like i think and i think like it it's in a sense, it's kind of like, almost like an acting thing. It's like, hey, this can become natural to you if you have the right people. So yeah, you yeah. don't have to give direction to people who are perfect for it. And you know what? Those are the best of us in fans. And those are the people we should support. Because you know what they're doing? They're giving us the show that we want. And if yeah. we don't want this, I don't know what the fuck we want. Maybe we shouldn't watch it, you know? Yeah, I, yeah if you're not I happy with it, you probably just stop watching because I don't know what you're going to be happy Yeah, with. every no, show, yeah. if you've ever been on a live show set, you're just you're used to it you're like okay this is where they're gonna tell me clap this is where they're gonna tell me shut up this you know like yeah you're just yeah. You, you obey the rules and you're like oh my god that's so cool that i'm here on set that's yeah that's a luxury yeah 100 percent. it's it's really cool and exciting and I, I don't want it to go away and i hope i hope if they make me pay for it it's not too expensive because i will pay to go back yeah um i even now watching the thunderdome with my dad because I, I got to watch SmackDown with my dad this week, and even watching it, I was kind of like, oh, man, some of this stuff feels real goofy this week. But my dad sat down and watched the whole thing, and he even told me at the end, he goes, I liked that. And I was like, oh, yeah? And he's like, usually, he goes, I turn it on sometimes. He goes, because I know you watch it. And he goes, I turn it on sometimes. Oh, yeah. He goes, I'll get through maybe one or two matches before I have to turn it off or just go somewhere else. And he goes, but I had no problem sitting through this whole one. He goes, it was pretty good. He goes, it was a fun show. It was fun to watch. And he was he thought the Thunderdome was fantastic. He thought it was so cool. And the eyes oh. 
As an IT person and as a fan of all sports, he's been watching all the sports. Any sport you can think of, he's watching it. And so to see how all the different companies are doing it, and he saw that, and he goes, that's cool. It's like, that is a good design. Yeah. So it was just cool. Um, that's sweet, yeah. I mean, I don't know what else to say about the Thunderdome than Thunderdome. <laughs> yeah, like, keep. I think keep going. Like, yeah. I express support. This is awesome, and... I'm a, I want to see more of this. The only yeah. kink you had were yesterday. I had problems yesterday, but we'll, we'll work on that as we go. Yeah. Um, as far as SummerSlam went and the Raw after, we can kind of squeeze all that together. Um, what were your big highlights of that stuff, man? I I mean, I don't, you weren't part of the prediction show, but I predicted that Bailey would retain and Sasha would lose. Yeah. I, I think it fits I, their dynamic. I was happy with that. It fits. It fits and it works. But here's the thing that's been bothering me. The thing that's been oh. pissing me off because they started it right away. Bailey dodges the hip toss. And that's their story. Bailey wouldn't take the hip toss. Why would she take the hip toss if she can avoid it? Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, it's so weird. She, Sasha took a bullet, they said, when she took the hip shot. D- Sasha took a bullet for Bailey. And then Bailey took advantage of that and won. Yeah. Then Bailey, Bailey dodges it. Why would Bailey take a bullet if they can both not take the bullet? Yeah. Bailey is the true heel here. And so many people have wanted to see Bailey turn heel for a long time. And this is it. Yeah. A heel's going to do shit you don't like. A heel's working you. Bailey's but shown that's not f- that. That wasn't even that. Of course she avoids the hip toss because now she can stay in the fight. If you get knocked out, you're out of the fight. So why would she take the hip toss? She avoided the hip toss and then took a hammer fist, then went down. Then Sasha had more time to overcome that obstacle and take advantage, and she couldn't. Where Bailey had less time and took advantage and won. Bailey yeah. wasn't even a heel in this situation. She was just a smart fighter of going, if I get knocked out now, I can't help my friend win. Avoids the yeah. first shot, get hit by the second one. Ah, shit, now I'm out. Yeah. You know what I mean? But you have to I- stay in the fight to be in the fight. I don't understand how they're painting Bailey bad in this one. No, I, and to me, like I, 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 that I didn't even think about that dynamic. I like that idea more. Um, but to me, that that's what I was just thinking. It was like, yo, if you're like this, like to me, I thought it was like, look, if you're a heel, y'all, you're being worked here. If you think this yeah. is like, like quit, like again, it's like a lot of my wrestling. T- so but, yeah, go ahead and, and say what you were saying about bailing. To me, like a lot of well, a lot of my wrestling this week has been like, I'm like, why is that? Why are y'all bitching? Like. We're, they're trying to do stuff for you. They're trying to work with you. Quit bitching. Like, you wanted Bailey to be a heel for years. Bailey's a heel. And doing a fucking good job at it. Let Like, enjoy it. Because, do you, you know, this is a... Tr- like, and they're doing a better job at this than I thought they would. I truly mm. like Bailey as a heel. Like, yeah, this is great. And I like it because I hate it. You know? Yeah. Like, I like... I, like, I hate Miz. But the reason I hate Miz is because Miz is a heel, and they're a fucking great heel. They're the best heel. Oh know? yeah, for sure. So for I'm sure. cool with it. And I think Sasha, as a ba- uh, Sasha as a uh, face coming up, because this is what's gonna happen, will be perfect. You know. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I think. Well, here's the thing: is I think actually that you end up getting. Um, I think Bailey will turn face because I think Sasha's going to get fed up and just turn total bitch on Bailey and Bailey's going to end up being the victim of being bullied even though that she's just been doing whatever it takes to be on top. You know what I mean? Although I stand by the Bailey San Martino comment yeah. from before. I do think 7 years of championship with Bailey is the way to go. No. Good god, no. No, god damn it, no. Because it's so good. So good. I, what's but, so fuck, fucking annoying is you'd be cool that you might be the only person at the end that's like, that was a perfect idea. As the rest of us are just like, oh shit, like either, like, like just over it. Like, oh god, no, no. Yeah. No. Like, you, you, you're you the kind of person who, like, they always say, like, too much of a good thing. And then, like, it's like, no, you haven't met Marsh for yeah, this no, need, that doesn't work. I need work. more yeah. of that good thing. Yeah. <laughs> like, too much of a good thing. This is an addict. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> You're saying that to an addict, pal. Yeah, yeah. What are you thinking? He's still 
like too many. You still need the bob. No. I'm you need the bob. Right the Bailey time. bob. I just want to like type right now. <laughs> just like as you're fixing your hair and shit, just go like no. <laughs> but no, like I I liked it and I like Asuka as a champion. I'm excited to see Asuka as a champion. Like Asuka as a champion is amazing. Uh, I think Asuka does make a good champion. I think Bailey makes a better champion. I don't have my I don't have my my headband. It's in the closet. Forgot it. I'll wear it on the next one, maybe. Yeah, on the podcast, uh, Marsh just put his ha- hair up like Bailey. Yeah, like I got old, Bailey. Old Bailey. Photo. Old Bailey. It's Good. it's very messy side got ponytail. <laughs> messy yeah. side ponytail. Because there ain't no stopping me now. All right. <laughs> That's Jameson talking. I do, I do think it works. I think it works to have Sasha now starting to struggle with her identity, right? Because she can't hold on to a title. Bailey even said in one of their previous iterations of fighting that, well, yeah, you've won the t- title more than me, but how long did you have it for? And then they got into a big spat. So there's already that confidence of, oh, yeah, I love you. It's just that I'm better than you, and that's fine. It's okay that I'm better than you is both of their attitudes. But Bailey has the numbers to prove it, and Sasha just has that feeling in her gut that she is truly the, the best to ever do this. And it's hard to argue both sides. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, for one, you watch them both in the ring with anybody, and you're like, okay, this is this is next-level wrestling. Mm-hmm. Both of their matches with Asuka that night were absolutely incredible. Mm-hmm. I thought they both showed up a bunch of stuff that we haven't seen anybody do. You yeah. know what I mean? No, I think which they, I and I think they needed to, but I think it really highlighted it because you have, you know, nothing's worse than getting boring, and I think not just Oscar, but both of them and everyone doing different things. It made it so that oh shit, these are great matches because if you if we saw two people do two matches with one person in the same night and this one person and you know and they've all done matches together like that could be so fucking boring you know like oh i've seen this before a lot great yeah. you know and they exactly didn't, so. mm-hmm. there's a lot of times that we feel like how many times am i going to see this match and then mm-hmm. we see it again bailey and oscar i mean realistically we've seen that probably what six times now seven Mm-hmm. And every time you forget that you've seen this before because they're yeah. not doing it like it's been done before. Mm-hmm. You know, they definitely get say, a feeling different. I, I will say this. I think, and I know that this is the, this is the show of Sasha and Bailey Marks. Um, I think we have to throw out a lot of credit to Asuka. Like, and it's more because not just like, yeah, everyone showed different things, but I, I watch that and I'm like, Fuck, Asuka had two matches in one night, and I wasn't tired of either of them. With yeah. people that Asuka's done a shit ton of matches with, and yeah. not, you know, yeah, they both looked fantastic. They both showed new things, but she didn't look boring, slow, or tired. And no. that's something that you can't, like, I can't take away from. Like, that's why Asuka's my Bailey. Like, like, yeah. Asuka's. No, and you amazing. can't argue yeah. that. That can't be argued. Ask anyone who says that Oscar that they think Oscar is the single greatest women's wrestler of all time. I can't fight with them. I go, oh, I I know why you said that, and yeah, I I don't have a counterpoint, other than I think it's Bailey, and I think that there's a lot of people, <laughs> right? It's like, or other I think maybe no. it's Becky. It might be Sasha. Like I think that those are the conversations that you have. But I I think when people talk about the four horsewomen, I think they talk about Oscar as like the fifth horsewomen. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like she's she's part of that. She's on that that next level echelon of stars. And I know that in my gut, because of the little bit of background knowledge we get, I know that backstage she's been believed to be on that higher level by everyone backstage. And they've been trying to put over that on the screen. And, and yeah. we're, we're at the point where they're allowing her to, to be that. And I think it's fantastic. But yeah, I can't argue someone who says they think the the greatest of all time is Oscar. Just the same way though that I don't think someone's going to argue with you if you say that you think it's Sasha or Charlotte or Becky or Bailey. I do think people will want to argue some of those, but I think when you really sit down, 
and say, let's look at their careers and their matches and the matches that you can rewatch over and over again. I think you put Bailey in that conversation and people don't go, oh, yeah, none of those watch matches are worth rewatching. They, they just did an untold about Sasha uh, Bailey Brooklyn. It was amazing. Yeah. Did you get to see that? I, I, I heard about it, but I didn't see it. Take the time to see it. It is fantastic. Did you watch that Jeff Hardy Chronicle? Still have it, dude. Like, right, I, just, I, that's, just that's ask him. Me. You've been busy. It's all busy. Okay. It's fine. Just ask him. That's on me. And I, I apologize for... Man. Here on the podcast, Marsh, yeah! Marsh is now dancing. Why the old one? Like, the new one's better. I, and the I new one's way better. Yeah, you got to yeah, get I with it. I don't miss... Like, I, I like hugging Bailey, but I'm like, this is cool. And yeah, I mean, I don't disagree with that. I think that... The other one's way fun, but I also think yeah. that my hair is a certain way right now. What am I supposed to do? Cut it and get a shitload of hair gel. Although, oh. if you cut your hair and got enough spray to do the new Bailey, I think justifiably you being blocked by WWE Twitter and several performers would be fair. I think you'd be you know, fine. I would get it. Here on the podcast, Marsh is now uh, dancing to Bailey's new entrance music, and now he's air guitaring for some strange reason. <laughs> Looks like you're gonna have a heart attack. Yeah, All right, it sounds like All you're right. having so, a fit of something. So, anything Whatever. else to say on SummerSlam? Just to oh, there's a ton on. to say on SummerSlam. Oh, yeah. I was just well, hyping right. up the I'm Bailey Sasha the, stuff. I'm and the story the moving forward, I think, is going to be very, very exciting. I thought they did a very good job of Sasha calling out to Bailey as she's tapping out. Bailey! Oh, my God, dude. I was all like, oh, ho, ho, ho. It, was, mm-hmm. it was something fucking else. And then they did it again the next night. Still liked it. Yeah. But I think we've said what we can say about them. What did you think about the debut of Dominic? I really like i was fucking nervous as hell about this yes like i was like man like i this is big to go with him this early like and you know i think they did it in a great way like Mm -hmm. i and i also say this is like dominic i think like he put in work he and he showed it i think they've built this up for a long time for us to be nervous and be like, yeah, this is going to be sad. Like, this is going to be yeah. David Flair, isn't it? Like, this is just going to be like, oh, dude, why are you doing this? But he has put in work and really showed it. And, like, the dude, he, is he is he his, his father's son? Yeah. I truly say that because in the future, this is a 20-year-old or 22, 23. He's just going to get better and better. And he looked amazing. And I think the gear fit him. I think everything was done well. I think Ray had enough of a role in that match. And Seth did a lot to really put over Dominic and show it. Because, you know, it, it was just enough goofiness, just enough silliness, just enough gaga for it to give him room. But he got to show off. You know You know what's also wild, though? is uh... how, bad, how bad Angie looks compared to Ray? Yeah. Well, she didn't have a lot of lines. But <laughs> you know what's wild is when you really think about it, Dominic did like four or five moves. He did almost nothing. He took a bunch of really great bumps and he told an amazing story because he already knows the most important thing in the ring is the story and not the moves. He could have been because he Pat McAfee had moves to show off. He needed to show off some stuff. He needed to because he doesn't know if he's going to be back. He needed to have that match where he shows off that he's he can do this. He's good enough to do this. Yeah. Dominic's going to be back. And he knew that the most important thing was to get the audience, the universe, to believe that this guy's got a story to tell. Mm-hmm. 
and you're in for this story for a yeah. long time. And he hooked you with the, with that, which I thought was fucking incredible. Yeah, I know it was, and it was so cool for him to have that moment with his stepfather. You know, it was just mm-hmm. so good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he did the frog splash just like his actual father. I like that they did reference it too. I was like, yeah, like, and like he said, he wishes Eddie was there, and I think that was sweet because you know, I think an like an unfortunate thing of that angle is that it took away from a really amazingly sweet like friendship because that's un- something we think of and it's gone away and like no like it's impossible t- for eddie to not have been a huge part of dominic's life because he's yeah. a huge part of ray's life yeah. so having you know that come up fuck yeah dude like i i i i i, I love that match and i love the moments there you know yeah i thought we still was... need we, so good. we 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 still need to go to like put flowers at his grave just like as yeah. a as a arizona wrestling fans thing yeah it's yeah. not far and there's no reason why we we couldn't do it yeah and we should uh i mean right now there's the you know the death plague so there's that reason but apart from that there's yeah, no it's... other additional reason yeah um but yeah i thought that it was it was uh, amazing i thought i thought we had two very very different debuts between um pat and dominic and i thought they showed two very different sides but they both came in showing up that they are here about the story and not about just what they can do inside the ring you know what i mean yeah i thought i thought it was incredible uh what do you think about sony deville loser leaves wwe i think but do you, do you think they added the song because of the unfortunate the unfortunate stuff out of the ring that's I think kind of the yes. rumor is that her lawyer had said that it was not going to be a good idea to shave your head mid trial because it yeah. could show whatever it shows. I guess uh, I don't know I if that's true. Obviously, I wasn't part of that conversation, but I think, I think more than I, sorry. Go ahead. I no, but I think that that's I think that's why they raised the stakes to lose these WWE. I don't know. Part I mean, my gut kind of tells me she might just be done. Might just uh, this whole thing could have happened and she could just go. What am I doing this for? Yeah. Yeah, you know? I agree. Or just a break. My hope is that it's, she's not done. She's an amazing performer, an amazing athlete, and someone yeah. I think very important. And I think, unfortunately, she was getting to kind of spread her wings and be more than something I've been critical, like a caricature that I've been critical of as this has come out. And I think my hope is it's just a break, but I could totally see this being like, I need a fucking break after this. I had a moment where... I had my life really, you know, put in jeopardy by something attached to this. I hope it's mm-hmm. just a break. I truly do. Yeah. Um, I think it's admirable that she still did the match, did things with everything happening. Um, yeah. I, I think, think she wanted to do that for her friend. Yes. And I also think, too, it is something that, you know, smaller communities in wrestling have made comments still about, well killing kayfabe by mandy being there in this part of it uh no this is yeah. this is a separate world from the world we watch this is your actor this is an actor that you you like finding out, oh yeah somebody went into their house yeah and i think good sorry we're, we're beyond that point of kayfabe right i mean becky didn't come back only to say oh i'll just be gone for a little bit no she said I'm pregnant. This is what's happening. So I just think in general, we're, we're past that, that point. We need to have the ability to suspend kayfabe. Well, the people who, the people who make the jokes about this and are the people who are old enough and capable enough to know the difference to it. If you're not able to suspend disbelief in this, when you, and know that difference and have that ability to do it, then really, I don't know why you're watching TV. Like, not yeah. just like this, but I don't know why you're watching anything. I think you need to go back to reading stuff where the characters you're reading are truly just there and they don't have another, you um, know. Caterpillar the... kind of deal. Yeah, yeah. I also think, like I said before, uh, give me kayfabe on TV and I'm okay with kayfabe outside of TV. But yeah. all the winks to the camera, I feel like that's where I split my – that's where I split the difference. Don't wink on the camera. Don't talk to me about catering. Don't tell me that you're putting someone over – don't talk about the office or getting getting your big push. Leave all that off TV. 
And then, and then when when you're seen in public eating dinner or staying over at someone's house, you shouldn't be. I won't think anything of it. Quit trying to blur the lines that much. You know what I mean? Give me kayfabe on TV. No kayfabe off TV. I'm fine with that. Yeah. What's up? Oh, I just was gonna say I, I you know don't blame Sonya at all because as someone that's gotten their house broken into and you know your stuff stolen, you still feel violated that someone came into your space. Well, you weren't there, so I can't even imagine what happened to her. Like, I I can't imagine someone actually being there um, with the intent to harm. Um, so I I just don't blame her at all. I just think it's so unfortunate that a psycho, not a fan, not a fan, someone really disturbed, yes. um, came and and you know led to this. I think is what I was that what I feel. I, I appreciate producers saying not a fan and emphasizing that because that should be self-evident. And, you know, occasionally you hear that, like, something I've really gotten into in the past, like, couple months on, like, Reddit is the communities that are like, hey, let me rewrite your headline more accurately. Oh, um, yeah, those are fun. And, oh, yeah, and we've unfortunately seen a few of these, like, let me re like rewrite your headline here is, this is not a crazed fan. This is a crazed individual. Fan isn't part of this. Um, there may be a space for them when they're better. And they're, in a sense, too, unfortunately, a victim. They need to get help. And maybe when they are able to get help, they can become a fan of something. I don't think they can become a fan of this or, a fa you know, they need space to be come better and true help mm -hmm. and that's the tragedy of this but we can't then ascribe them to be a fan because then you lump them into everything else and that's wrong you don't yeah and i think we covered that a lot last week yeah. uh, i think on this one i was just um asking more or less on do you think that she's actually going to be gone from the company do you think it's just going to be a break like you were saying i really hope it's a break because i felt like she was just catching her stride but at the same time going through trauma like that if this is the end for Sonya, then cheers, and we'll see you down the road. But uh, I really hope we see her again somewhere. How how wild would it be if she shows up in AEW two weeks? <laughs> yeah, I hope oh at the God, very that would be the worst. I thought, dude. No. I hope at the very <laughs> least that she's inspired some other people to to come up. Yeah, because I think she she did a lot of good things. I think she did. I think she made a lot of good uh, impacts on fans, even if she doesn't feel she may have made an impact on the show. I think she made a lot of impacts in people's personal lives. Uh -huh. So I think I think I hope she comes back. Um, the championship match, Drew versus Randy, was fine. It was a good match. Um, yeah, it was. It was okay. It was kind of what I, it was. What we expected. Kind of, yeah, unfortunately, I kind of you know, I really truly wanted randy to take it from drew because i i get the narrative of drew and the character that drew's trying to play i just still don't think drew plays the character well yeah and that's kind of why i'm just ready to move on already with that with that match it was a good match they did both did a good job they did exactly what everyone knew they were going to do there's nothing to talk about there because there's nothing that happened there that wasn't something that hasn't already been talked about or foreseen so yeah. the universal championship match though that was surprising in a few ways. For a Woo! false count anywhere match, weird that it ended in the ring. Yeah. Also weird that he cut up the ring to expose wood when you're legally allowed to take them to the concrete. It was I was kind... really confused by that bit, but I was also I think... okay with it. I get it. There's nothing worse in the wrestling world than the actual ring. I think yeah, this. I think place. the reason they did that was, and maybe they should have just redone the staple there. Maybe there was a different aim for the Thunderdome for camera angles for this. Maybe also they like, hey, we're doing this. We want to take advantage of. We have the fans here. Yeah. You know, so they could have done done it differently. Just have it be maybe we're gonna do a. This is a situation where you build it differently. You make a hell in a cell or something like that. Um. But I get it. I, I think it's okay. It's weird, but it was okay. It was yeah, a it was good... Done well. Yeah, And I like, you know, Bray and Braun can't do wrong. And, you know, a, in the past couple weeks, holy shit, I ha you have to really give Braun serious credit for it, advancing his character, trying, yeah. showing up more and more, and becoming more than what he was a year ago, which 
I've always wanted to like Braun, but at times it's like, can you not be a yelling Southerner who says their line? You know? Yeah, a hundred percent. Not worth it. Um, he hasn't said get these hands in a while, which is great. He hasn't said it since since Bray made fun of him for it. Because remember, he goes, I'm going to get your belt, Braun. And he's like, huh? Yeah. He's like, Braun, I'm going to get your belt. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then he's all like, I'm not going to say it, Bray. And he hasn't said it since. And so I thought it was, yeah, awesome. Drop it. You don't need it. You don't need it. You're bigger than that. You're better than that. Also, drop this fucking train bullshit. You're not a train. You're not a steam train, whatever the fuck that was. You're a big, Uh, giant, scary monster. And you're awesome. What do also, you think you about for... the fiend? Be wait, are you gonna say thank you for shaving your head? Yes, I was gonna say thank you for shaving your head. Why? So you can have finally have a costume this year. Yeah. All right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he looks he looks better. It, it was a weird ass haircut. He looks better with a bald head, dude. Come on. There's no on. chance the mic picked that up. There's no chance the mic picked that up. Go on. I'm just going to quietly just remind everyone, Marsh farted, and this is why we need butt, mar- butt mics. I need Real a mic on the back of my chair. Yeah. I need uh, one of those little mic clips. I need one of those on the back of my chair. For the sake <laughs> if of we chair. do that, unfortunately, there'll be a point where something breaks, and we'll have like a – we will have a guest in the future, and it'll be like, what mic do we use? And then he's there, and they just lean in, and they're like, what the fuck yeah. is that they're smell? Like, and you're oh. like, oh, no. I think this. I think this mic has had an electrical fire. No, it's fine. Um, <laughs> why is the Why is it like a different color? What for the phone? do you think about Bray winning? Apart from what happens after Bray wins, let's just take that one, two, three. What do you think about uh, <laughs> Lalienda? Thanks for coming through and hanging out. Uh, yeah, Sound Eighteen came through trying to sell something. Lalienda's like, ban him. He's a bot. Uh, I agree. However, uh, our our monster mod. Dork Chop has already left the chat. I don't know how to ban anybody. You were trying to figure it out? Are you going to shut down the stream mid? No, stop it. Are you sure? Because we're frozen. We're not. Frozen on this. Oh, we're ba- okay. We have been dropping frames. All right. We're just dropping frames. All right. Um, what do you think about Bray 1, 2, 3 beating Braun in the middle? Well, kind of the side middle. I liked it. I think we needed it um, because, yes, The Fiend is a character that can be above titles. Mm -hmm. But I think that that is also a character that needs wins to be strong and needs the occasional in the middle. Like, yeah, I'll play by other rules to win to show you. Because to me, it's, it's a thing of if you think your world revolves around this perfect i'll fuck with your world your world is the ring i'm gonna fuck with the ring yeah because then when they have a match where they go beyond it okay you have open how many times do i have to tell you not to have spari open sorry about that oh my god yeah that could have been done anytime it's all right it's just the first show it's only the first show it's only the first show and the third time you've dropped Sorry us. Sorry about that. That was totally my fault. Well, I just I just thought everyone wanted a little well, music. Maybe the on middle. the second show we'll get it right. Episode two. Apologies. Sorry, Clum. Sorry, guys. Episode one jitters. That was my fault. Oh, fucking Christ. Uh, I agree. Fiend needs wins to look strong. I don't think that character works if, if he keeps taking losses. I liked he beat Braun. I do think he can be above the title. I don't think he has to be above the title. I think he can see the title as a tool and not as the ultimate goal, but as a thing. Like I said before, what I really like the idea of of Bray as a champion is to use the title as bait. If I have this, everyone wants it. And now I can pick and choose who I get. And I can Mm -hmm. lure someone in because of this champion. Uh, where without the title, he's just a psychopath who's coming to get revenge on you, and you have to just accept that and say okay and be in the match. Where, if he's got the championship, it's all like, hey, I might be a psycho who's trying to get revenge on you, but if you win, you get this big winner's purse. You know what I mean? Yeah. I would say this too. I think um, maybe 
and I appreciate this, in giving him the win, it's an acknowledgement of the failures that were the prior iteration of Bray Wyatt. Because yeah. the prior iter iteration of Bray Wyatt was an amazing character that I think everyone loved that was a victim of an older style of booking of, cool, we're going to build this up and then at the pay-per-view we'll have you lose. And it went from being once a year we'll have you lose in this big build-up to once every big pay-per-view to, hey, well, clearly, you know, you're this this uh this this face is gonna beat you at backlash or great balls yeah, of fire you're the one that everyone gets over because yes. they, you're on the way up and you become but, less scary and less important and less impactful in doing that it's like yeah. finn balor well he's gonna lose because he's not the demon why the fuck would you not be the demon then like, yeah 100 percent. what did you think about roman making his return here okay so back to uh the idea of bray needs wins um I think it's also important that Bray won because of Roman coming back in this way. If Roman came back and came after Braun as the champion, then Bray gets knocked down further. Yeah. And I think ultimately Roman's going to get that belt probably fairly rapidly. And it could be an interesting feud between him and Bray of extending out. But I also am curious to see if maybe Bray wins against Roman. And I'm wondering that I, too. So we do already have a match announced for Raw, and so we'll kind of wrap up SummerSlam and talk about Raw and the implications. I will say this real quick. Really peculiar to me that uh, Retribution was not involved in SummerSlam at all. Like they have some sort of weird reverence for SummerSlam, but they did come yeah. back on, on Raw and did, and did their their little thing, and, and there's not much there. And I think we're ready for, for them to say why they're there. Um, but apart from that, we can wrap up the show talking about Roman and stuff because um, – Raw overall, I thought was very good. It moved stories along, um, but I think the real story here is will probably Keith Lee and Roman. So, um, do you have any anything uh, other otherwise, or is that okay with you? If we talk about Roman and Keith Lee, I think that's good. I'm cool with that. Okay. Um, so, yeah, with Roman coming back in this fashion, we're gonna immediately get a triple threat at Payback with Roman versus Braun versus Bray for the Universal Title. And it seems like, oh, what a smart way to go ahead and have Bray lose the title without having to lose a match and can still look strong because they can always pull something weird where they handcuff Bray or something and, you know, what was he going to do? You know what I mean? Um, mm -hmm. I think it's really smart and really cool. I just wish it wasn't a week because I think that the story between Roman and Bray is so big. I think you could build that into a mania size match. You know what I mean? Like if they were pulling up mixed match challenge for Braun, the amount of footage they have with Bray and the shield and Roman specifically is outrageous. Like they can really dig in on that one. You know what I mean? Uh -huh. No, I, I agree with that. I think it is an interesting way to build it. And I'm excited. I'm excited to have Roman back. I, and this might be me because of how this was built up. When Roman came in like that, it's like, cool, Roman's a heel? And I paused. I was like, no, because Roman jumped on and attacked the heel. So Roman's yeah. a face. And I kind of want, I kind of want Roman to come in as a heel. And I he still might. Him, and I, Or have him come in and be not... He needed a shakeup. He truly yeah. needed a shakeup. So have him come in and be again. Like I, I, God, I, I feel like I said it over and over again, and I hate like saying it, but like have him not be this like white meat baby face valiant. I'm gonna win. Eat, you know, take your vitamins, eat your spinach. Face. Have him be like Stone Cold. You know. And he was kind of getting there at one point. Um, I think it's possible. I don't know that we know that he's a heel or a baby face yet. I think we haven't seen enough. I yeah. do think it's funny he was wearing a t-shirt that said wreck everyone and leave. Mm -hmm. And the way that the thirsty internet crowd responded to that was really funny to me. The amount of women online is like, he could wreck me and leave. I was like, oh yeah. my God. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I don't think that's what this shirt meant. but That's pretty good. <laughs> yeah, there was a bunch of them I saw. It where it was like, I saw like a string of them. He wrecked me. Oh, you tell me. Oh. Oh, I, I hear you there. And then it's like, oh, my God. Did you ever, and then like, someone's all the... like, 
there was one one woman in there was all like, I'm ready to queue up for that line. And you're just like, oh, my God. I fuck, you fucking know, too. The, did you ever see, like, the post by the – she's always at, like, Barclays Center shows. It's this woman who would always be uh, – there was signs that were, like, just super vulgar, like, uh, like, Finn – like re- like Finn unleash the demon on my like I want hers <laughs> like her her response to be like yeah because it was like yeah. the most vulgar shitty like yeah, that's great I love I love this <laughs> I'm gonna go back and find this one that I found that when I first saw it I was I even remember showing uh, Kevlar because I was like dude this is rough where someone's all like this is how I wish Roman would leave me and it was a picture of like a burger but like you just see two buns and there was just like a pile of mayonnaise oh. coming out of it, oh, yeah. all over. And it was like, oh, I wish Roman was, and I was like, oh. And I sent that to Kevlar, and he's all like, "You people don't ever say it, but women are the actually grossest ones. Yeah. Actually, like, well, 100%. there's like that, that comedian talks about, yeah, women being Who? pretty gross. Um, the one, I think it's the one that's on SNL now. Okay, I don't know what that's supposed to mean. The, well, like, Oh, Michael Shea. Yeah. He had a thing about women being yeah. disgusting because he's all like, you know, we see a salad and we just think we're going to eat it. And so, a woman sees a salad, she goes, I could fuck a bunch of stuff in there. No. <laughs> That's not. Jack? I mean, I, I, the only thing that would have made it better for that to me would be like if they made, instead of it be like wreck everyone, wreck everyone, leave, have it be something that initialized WAP. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, oh, be that good. would have been so good. <laughs> Oh, WAP's been like. Stop a, like, trying to fart, Marsh. Try. You're on the podcast. Marsh <laughs> keeps WAP, like. WAP has been the the like the bane of my existence the past two weeks because it's appeared in like my training. It's been in, like, not intentionally, and just been like, oh well, yeah, because in 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 tech you talk about wireless, wireless access, points. access points. Yeah, and, it comes uh, up all the tra- time. The first time I saw it trending, I was all like, is there a new router out like, or something? Is there like new router technology that I don't you know were about? You're just thinking nerd. Dude, <laughs> yeah, I <laughs> when I first like, saw it. Oh. Yeah, you gotta like you gotta like you gotta address that WAP. And I, there's a pause. They look down, but oh god. And then in shot, you just saw see. <laughs> so just a little off track. Not anymore. Yeah. Bronson Reed, I love that he. He always does these little videos of himself working out, and he he had one of himself lifting this insane amount of weights, That's and great. then and then he just said, "Here's your WAP, here's yeah. your WAP material," and oh, he no. added he added Cardi. Oh, that's so funny! Here you go. Yeah, no, that'd been good if it was all like so, nothing wreck sexier all than comp- persons. <laughs> nothing sexier than confident thick man. Yep, <laughs> thick boy. I do like when Bronson Reed comes out. You can hear Shotzi in the audience just going, Thick boy! <laughs> so like, okay. She's, she's all in it. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> oh. So I'm excited Roman is back. I really, truly am. I feel like he, I feel like his mere presence reminds you of the level of star power he actually wields. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because a lot of people talk about how they don't want him there, they don't want him there, none of this. He shows up, and you go, oh, shit, Roman is back. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? He's a star. Mm-hmm. You forget well, like that when you've had champions. I know. Yeah, well, no. I mean, when you think about the Universal title, it went from – from it went from, yeah, Goldberg and Braun, and you're kind of like, yeah, I guess he's a champion. You got Drew even. You're like, yeah, I guess he's a good champion for the pandemic era. And then Roman comes back and you go, oh, my God, why does that guy not have all the titles already? Give him the title well, next week. When we said, like, when when it was when it was Goldberg and Roman, like, as we were like, yeah, that's cool. I'm actually okay with that. I like that. That makes sense. Like, I'm cool with this. Yeah. Like, yeah. And then, oh, shit. Like, it, it was cool to have him back because it wasn't him with dog food on him. Yeah, 100%. And you know what? No negative about Braun. They did a WWE 24 about WrestleMania this year. I know that I'm giving you a lot of homework, but you got to see that Chronicle. You got to see that Untold. You got to see this 24, dude. Okay. This okay. Braun is going to fucking make you cry, dude. He's just going to do it. He opens up about how much it means to him to be even in the same sentence as Goldberg, regardless oh. of the match. 
he's all like, are you kidding me? Like the way that it all panned out and like, he can't even talk about getting a phone call and being told to come to the performance center and then being told you're going to be in a match with Goldberg. He can't even get through that sentence before he's just bawling being like, I was in a match with Goldberg. He goes, I went in WrestleMania against Goldberg me. And he's all like, what? You know, he's like, couldn't wrap his head around it. Talks about, be, you know, yeah. Being a, being a chubby, chubby child and, yeah, and being yes. bullied, which is wild to think about Braun being bullied. You're like, oh my God, someone bullied Braun Strowman. The dude's a hundred yeah. feet tall. Like, what? Yeah. Like you, what brave soul was like, I'm all fuck with Braun Strowman. Yeah. Fuck that kid. But yeah, it kind of made me more of a fan of his. No, for than sure. Than I was before. But all that to say that, you know, Goldberg versus Braun was what it was. I'm happy for Braun. I'm happy for a lot of things that happened there. But at the end of the day, Roman shows up and you remember that level of star power that those guys haven't attained yet. You know, Braun doesn't have that yet. He's not that level of star power. That's not to say he can never get there. He's still very young. He still has a lot of time to get there. And I think he could. And I think that this evolution we've seen of his character is all the more reason why I believe he could get to that level. Yeah. But you see Roman and you go, oh, oh, yeah, I forgot about that. Like, I'm really excited to have him back. I wish. No, here's the thing, though. Okay. If we're going to payback, there's no wish I, it wasn't going to happen. Payback's happening. Mm. If Roman takes the title from Braun off of Fiend, yeah, then theoretically you could have something happen between Fiend and Braun where they maybe have another match or they maybe combine their powers of evil Mm -hmm. and they both start to build this coming for you Roman. And now you can have a program with Roman Braun and Bray where Bray sends Braun in to do his dirty work. Roman overcomes Braun and then Fiend. And then you could even have Bray going against, you know, you can have the different variations of Bray like we saw with Braun. You can have that happen with Roman until it gets to finally Fiend and Roman one-on-one. You could have, like, uh, it'd be cool, like, if it were a triple threat and you have have Roman win, but not in a Roman winning way. Like, have yeah. it be that. And then it becomes, like, so, like, Bray and Fiend continue their story against each other because that still has legs. And then Roman comes in as a champion, but an interesting and vulnerable one where he has to prove it because... That would also, to me, kind of complete that circle of, not that Roman really has a lot to prove, but I feel like Roman could go for a, a good angle of him, like, yeah, I I won this and ha- and define, like, I won this for a reason. And then In a have... sense, he does have a lot to prove, though, right? Because he's been the guy who's been deemed not the guy by the, the people he's the guy for. I mean, the company says you're the guy, and everyone says, yeah, we want him to be the guy. And then the second we're all like, oh, wait, they also want him to be the guy? I'm like, well, then fuck that. Like, yeah. the fans had this complete rebellion against him. He's got something to prove of, I can prove to you why I'm the guy. I'm trying to think what podcast I was listening to that talked about the change of styles you see. I might have been at Cornette. I'm going to be honest. When someone gets big enough. When someone is big enough to be Austin and Cena and Roman, you reduce their moveset dramatically to prevent injury. When Which, you start leaning on a, on someone that heavily, you do a lot more to protect them from ever not being there. Where on the build style. up, they go to a brawling style, they go to a, a power move style. And that's what we saw with Roman was he would take a bunch of bumps and then he would do his five moves and call it a night. And it was, to me, really upsetting because it was just like not a lot of, not a psychology there. But you, then you see him at live shows, not televised, and he'd fucking go all out. He was like backwards of what you would expect. You know yeah. what I mean? You'd expect him to go all out only on televised stuff. And he was just going berserk on the live shows. And I was like, oh, my God. Like, this is crazy. This guy's so good. So I think that there's something to be said for that, that people just didn't like what he'd become. But... You start to understand why. If if they're going to hang their banner on you for the next 10 years, mm-hmm. they can't have you just have a broken neck. Yeah. You know? So I get it. It's a bummer because I think he's so good and I don't know if people will see it. But I do wonder if in the era that we're in. Maybe that can change. Maybe that can change. Maybe they'll let him. Maybe because he was doing it. And I think he's capable. I really do. I'm really excited to have him back too. Um, 
I think I, I I would say this is I think there are examples of people who are at that level that don't fit that mold. Undertaker yeah. is a good example um, where you know he didn't have he he did different different things or who the match is with um, Finn Balor and Brock was a fantastic match that was not... I was about to say, you match. might disagree with me, but I was going to say Brock. Because I was going to be like, Brock will do his couple moves when he's protecting himself. But when he's ready to put over that next guy, he's going to do yes. a lot of other stuff. And I think Roman can do it. And the other thing, too, is like that was a good example of a match to me that Brock still looked dominant as shit. Because I think the other thing with Roman, and this is a Cena thing and a Cody thing, I want to see you have matches where they're drawn out matches that might have you go to your limit, but it's not you getting your ass kicked for hours and hours and hours and then pulling it out at the end. Cause that, that was, was Roman's like, thing that, that frustrated me. MO. I hated yeah. that about Roman. Mm -hmm. All right. Here's 15 minutes of Roman getting his ass kicked. He's going to squeeze in two moves on the way and he's going to do three moves at the end and we're done. And yeah. I was like, come on. Like, yeah. <laughs> why, are, why don't you just do that in the beginning champ? I mean, I it, guess it's the rope dope but every Yeah, I was, I was about to just make a Muhammad Ali. Like, that yeah. didn't work out because it doesn't work out in the long run. Yeah, you only could get away with that in a few fights, man, yeah. before it just did him in. Yeah. So, <laughs> um, that worked really well for Foreman because Foreman's still alive. and Yeah, has and his has grills. Abilities. Yeah, and his mental capabilities. Well, we say that, but he has 13 kids named George. So how much does he have? And and a daughter named Frida, her, her name is Georgina. Yep. Um, so ultimately, cheers to Roman for coming back. Cheers to Dominic for a mm -hmm. killer psychological debut. And cheers to Pat McAfee for yep. being the GOAT and a future Hall of Famer. Can't wait for his Hall of Fame speech. Cheers to you guys. Oh, the biggest cunt ever. I don't know if you're talking about me. Um, no, Matt McAfee. Yeah, such a heat machine. So, okay, so Raw, was there anything besides Keith Lee you wanted to make sure you talked about? Because I thought overall it was a good show. It was a, it was a good show. It was. A I great thought all Keith the women Lee. did good. Mm -hmm. I thought the Ruby Riot and Liv Morgan teaming up with Bianca was very nice. I'd like to see more with the Riot Squad. I don't know if Bianca needs them though, and I feel like she doesn't. I, yeah, and I feel like it's it, that was that a little was, bit weird to. Yeah, it was just was a utility part. match. That was just yeah. a hump. They put the, the six of them together because Bianca and Zelina can't have a bunch of one-on-one -on -one matches together. Yeah. They did their one. They're doing this. They're going to do another couple probably things, and then you'll get – maybe at Payback you'll get the actual one-on-one -on -one, one more one last time. But it was a utility match, and it was just, you know, putting – showcasing six women. Yeah. That's that's fair. Um, I think uh, – like Rain Dominic was nice to see them tag. I felt nice. I think Shayna and Nia is an interesting pairing to go mm -hmm. after the tag titles, though. Does that mean Nia is a face, which I think is difficult because no, it was I mean, funny. Shayna's to, a heel. Yeah, no, no. I I was heel heel or mm -hmm. heels versus heels. I was watching uh, a video like on you know pretty recently wrestling YouTube, and I was like, oh yeah, we're not even we're we're well past the ability of anyone defending Nia because it was just them like yeah it was just going straight into Nia's this and stuff I was like fuck yeah you know <laughs> super not interested yeah I understand anything um, Nia I mean it's I, I thought Raw under I was pretty cool I liked Ziggler yeah like Ziggler's being a great bad, in there yeah um I think the the I would say to me it was kind of weird how MVP's stable is so ineffective in the ring but fantastic in underground and but i think that's the point i think they have i think they use underground to make sure they stay looking scary mm -hmm. so that way in the matches when they don't just dominate or go over immediately it doesn't take too much shine off i think that raw underground is so perfect for that let's just show lashley's pissed and wanting to fight because he's sick and tired of these little wrestling matches you know what i mean yeah sure so i i think it's yeah, I think it's exactly how you do that, especially because what are we going to do? Have Lashley run through Ricochet a hundred times? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, we don't have that big of a mid-card anymore. Yeah. We just don't. It's true. Um, I think... I, I don't... 
I think the weakest point to me was the McIntyre Orton thing. Because it Yeah. I, and I get again this okay. Uh McIntyre not selling punts frustrates me. Doesn't yeah, I, I just don't tend to care as much. I do like they sent him to the hospital for the third one. That was so yeah. funny. He shouldn't have had to take three, though, because I think it, like, the punt. It's supposed to be the, banned because it's deadly. The punt is, and it should be protected. The punt is such a cool move because it's something that was only able to be done by a few people. So when it's not protected, I don't care about it. And I think I don't like when you, I, that a move like that becomes something that you have somebody do three times because... I think the other reason you make it banned because it's so dangerous is that's something that when someone fucks it up and they're a kid trying to do what their uh, people do, and yeah, that's something we joke about never being done. Dude, imagine your big brother punting you. Oh, yeah. I think yeah. the other thing, though, is he took two and then was just out for about an hour and a half of the show. Then he came back and took a third, and then he was like, I had to go to the hospital. So I do think that the second one, I mean, he had an hour and a half. You know what I mean? Like, I didn't think it was a total no-sell. It's not like he took two punts and then kipped up or nipped up, whatever. You know what I mean? Like, it wasn't like... Did better than Shawn Michaels then. Yeah, he did better than Shawn Michaels. He didn't just, like, roll over and be like, oh, that sucked. I'm okay, though. But eyes are straight. Yeah. (laughs) I can see forward again. Uh, Oh. What do you think about Aleister Black kicking Kevin Owens? I thought that was really weird, but I guess they're just trying to make Aleister Black mean. Yeah, so I'm okay with really, it. It was weird. I mean, like, I, I think Aleister Black's the kind of person, like, I want to see some stank on him because I like him. He does good matches. Yeah. Do some things with him. But it was kind of, it felt shoehorned. Yeah, it did. Mickey James felt a little shoehorned, but I really like seeing her kick Lana in the face. <laughs> Stuff I like, man. Um, I just like seeing Lana get fucked up. Cool. <laughs> yeah, Lana taking a, a boot right to the face via Mickey James. I'm happy. It's a good show. Uh, and then was it the? I didn't have a problem with the arm wrestling match. I didn't have a problem with. I've been having a huge problem with the Angel Garza thing. I didn't want to talk about it. Uh, just, but then that brings us to Keith Lee. Yeah. Um, what did you think about Keith Lee's debut? Here's our other debut. This was a week of debuts. I liked it. I think it was good. I think it was handled well. I'm excited for it. Um, I think he came in, and he's the kind of guy who comes in, they gave him enough of a presence to it, and he came in looking like a million bucks. Um, You know, and he also, you know, he is such a big, scary dude, and I think in having him look really good in a rumble where that's still in people's minds helps out a lot. Cause it kind yeah. of scratches away. Like I think of other people that came in that like, shit, they look good. And then it dissipated. Um, like Bobby Roode, Bobby Roode came in and it was shit immediately. And it sucked because Bobby Roode in NXT was amazing. Yeah. You know, hundred percent. I, I, so this is good. I think, this is the right way to do it, you know? I think he looked really strong in his match against Randy Orton. I do think that his, he had too much mic time. I think that he talks like someone who's kind of patronizing you. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I need you to know right now that I'm smarter than you before we move on because I also know that you think I'm dumb. Okay, well, none of that was true walking into this. You know well, I mean? Like, okay, I didn't think you were done when you walked in. I don't know why you're trying to assert a, a level. Like, no one talks the way he talks. You I'm okay mean? with I, it because Like, I get that that's kind of how he talks. I get that's what he that's what he talks like, but I've worked with people like that before where it's you are trying to overcome an obstacle that may not actually be there and you're coming off as very patronizing and it's unnecessary. You're not going to win yourself over by trying to convince me you're smarter than me. It doesn't matter to me if you're smarter than me. It makes no difference. We just need to get the job done, right? Yeah. So working with people like that who have to assert it usually comes from, uh, in my experience, people who have grown up in, a, in an area with not a great education, so they they overcame something they're very proud of, which is cool. But it comes from a level of insecurity of, I think everyone thinks I'm dumb and I have to assert this way. 
I think he could have gotten the same thing across and a little bit tighter with like half the words. I think there was a few sentences that just could have been scrapped and I think he would have come out great. I'm afraid he's going to alienate average viewers. You know what I, I mean? Think, fair. I think part of it, and it might have been like a response to a critique of Keith Lee has been his talking that he doesn't talk a lot enough or that he comes off as not confident. And I think he came off very confident. It's a different type of confidence. And I like that he's not... I could see a point where he could have been boxed in or boxed out into something. Yes. I don't and want I him think, there either. Yes. I think he's... I think him as a quiet, scary, like, I can back this up smart. Like, he's Keith Lee. He's different. He's limitless. I like that. I'm cool yes. with that. And it makes sense to me. But yeah, I think it could have been a little bit less because he showed, yeah, he can fucking talk. Let him talk. You know? Yeah. He could be, he could have been a little less verbose and would have been just fine. Because he could be the I'm quiet and I'm smart. The whole greetings and salutations, Mr. Orton, was kind of already enough. He didn't have to then go on for like two minutes about his weird little cadence. He I did could like, have just gone straight into the other the last line. You know what I mean? I did like greetings and salutations. It was fucking funny to me, though. Like, it's cause fine. It, I, yeah. It's fine. I think he went too far after that. I think you say something like that, and you get a Randy Orton to look at him like, okay, Frazier. You know what I mean? Fuck is you, Where, yeah. <laughs> yeah, okay, I'm not used to that, and I like that. I want him to sound different. But I think if he does too much of that, it will alienate people. That's my gut feeling based off of my experience around people who talk that way. We'll find out, and I hope that he doesn't. I hope that he's uh, – because I think the other thing is he backs it up in the ring in such a tremendous way. His match with Orton was incredible. He got to show off a ton of power, and Randy Orton sold with his face a ton of stuff. You know what I mean? It wasn't just like him holding his back because a, a move hurt. He was thrown and then looked over like, you did that to me. You know what I mean? Like confused. I didn't so, like – I didn't like the the change in the ring gear. I thought that was unnecessary. And I, I wasn't a fan of it. I'm not going to well, like shit on him forever because of it. I didn't like it much, no. I well, to me it's this is it's need it was needless. I think Keith Lee and I'll say this. So, I'm going to throw this out as I'm a big dude. I'm not going to ever look like Randy Orton. So, it's kind of cool to see a big dude go out there and look scary and stuff and like like you're like yeah, he's he's not ripped but he's also not having to wear these weird extra layers and trunks and shirts because yeah. a lot of times people like it's it's the kid at the pool wearing the t-shirt thing you that's know? how dominic and, looked yeah and at times with the well, hood on his jacket at times yeah and it, it's like just let someone hey this guy's still scary as hell and he's got a gut and i'm cool with it because i like power belly guy power yeah. belly guy is cool because i'm power belly guy yeah, a hundred percent. Yeah, I do think. So I'll be honest with you. I wasn't upset to find out he was going to be dressed different because I did think that his shorts were a little weird in NXT. I thought they were a little too tight. It looks like he was just out there wrestling in his underwear. Is what it looked like to me. So I oh, did want him works. to have a different type of shorts, but I wanted to have shorts more like Chad Gable or Kevin Owens has. He was wearing like this skirt thing. It's like yeah. half skirt, half shorts. And so I was a little like off put by like that. Drop cro- yeah, he's wearing like drop crotch trunks. And it's like, okay. Yeah, and like it kind of oh. went up in the back a little bit. So I was kind of like, what? Oh, it's angled weird. It was just a weird cut. And so I just wasn't a fan of that. But I wasn't going to let that ruin everything. I thought he did he did a great job. His music was kind of generic. But I have a feeling it's because they're going to pick something else for him. Um, I don't know what's going on, why they didn't want to use his old music. I I liked it, but uh, there's rumors that their contract with CFO is not what they want it to be, so they're trying to get people away from CFO music. So that could be, but I don't think this is his permanent music because it did sound a little generic. It didn't quite fit the intro. I think they're working on something. I do. I I wonder if the change in the reason he had to cut that promo so long is that they were like, hey, we got to really emphasize that you're different because we're not going to use the music, and the music does that. The music yeah. kind of accomplishes some of that talking where it's like like you like have somebody yeah. come out and it's like that really hype ass song and it's him, you know, it's it's somebody talking and saying this and you're like, Who the fuck are you? So he doesn't have to say it. Whereas him coming yeah. out to something is like, I gotta emphasize 
I'm Keith Lee. I'm a big, quiet, scary guy that's going to back it up. Because may- maybe it was because they changed so much, you know? Yeah. Uh, he did send out a couple of tweets today, which I thought were notable because a lot of the shit people were talking. He sent one out that said, music is out of my hands, period. Leave it be. I'll sort it out later. Then someone texted, That's all right, let's talk. Yeah. Hmm. And then someone else says, all right, let's talk about that ring gear then and does like a big eye emoji. And he goes, leave it be and have some patience. Take a deep breath. It's going to be okay. I promise. Let me handle that stuff. Shit. <laughs> yeah. And so then let's see. We have. Could, I didn't know you could like in a tweet exude that I'm six foot four, 340 pounds and I'll fuck you up that like in that much. <laughs> like, Okay. <laughs> Yeah. Sorry, Dad. <laughs> I also don't like the anomaly stuff. He goes, I get a lot of names, like Limitless and Anomaly. I'm like, anomaly is not a good word to describe someone. <laughs> People don't say anomaly because they think that guy is cool or something. They, they say, say anomaly, anomaly because they don't know what he's doing. You know what I mean? Like, like a freak. Yeah, it's kind of a freak thing. It's kind of like, I don't what know, man. He, when... just, he just goes behind the dumpster and he's kind of an anomaly and... He comes back to lunch after that, and you're like, what? Yeah. Like, that's how people use that phrase. They're like, he locks himself in the car uh, most, <laughs> almost every the, break. He goes He's got really urinal. tinted. Yeah. He, he goes to the urinals, drops his pants, and lifts up his shirt. Like, his pants yeah. are at the floor. He's kind of an yeah, anomaly. Yeah, he's, he's an anomaly, you see, man. You see ankles while he's peeing. Yeah. And an ass. <laughs> uh, so I don't like that he's going with the anomaly thing because it even is on his his uh twitter as well it says anama lee you're like okay dude that's not good um but someone else asked him uh you didn't have to answer and explain why uh can't wait for you to tear it up and he says of course i don't have to i don't owe anyone an explanation it is simply my way of showing respect to the people who have supported me i don't want people caught up on small things when they when what should be acknowledged is on my debut i mix it up with orton way bigger deal yeah. And then someone says, you're one of my few favorites, bro, but they did you dirty by making your match end in a DQ. And he goes, it was a no contest. Calm down. LOL. <laughs> but that's just true, too. Like, this whole, like, oh, he's buried. Oh, it's ruined. Oh, they gave him a fucking DQ ending. That's fine. How did yeah. he look during the match with Randy Orton? Randy Orton made him look scary. Mm-hmm. And I like, I like, yeah, again, shit, I've never had a tweet. Kind of emasculate me. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'll okay. shut up. <laughs> um, so I think that overall he had a tremendous first showing. It was fantastic. His music needs work. I think he'll get new music. I think it's very easy to see that. I don't think that they had put a lot of thought into the music he was going out there with because it wasn't going to stick. There's, not, there's a lot of people who've had different music along the way. I think mm-hmm. he's going to be another person who will have different music along the way. I think they're going to find a better fit for whatever his his pants are going to look like. I don't think he's going to stick with those with that if kind of Braun flowy Strum- thing. But yeah, if Braun Strowman can get past Carhartts to make him look like he pissed himself. Yeah, Keith Lee will be fine. Yeah, so. I think the, the I think I think like he said, his debut his debut match with Randy Orton. Randy Orton made him look like a million bucks. I think the thing is is that we wanted to see the Keith Lee who was in the Royal Rumble where Brock, Brock Lesnar goes, who's this big motherfucker? Yeah. And we wanted exactly. to see, Sur- yeah. And we wanted to see survivor series, Roman Reigns and, and Keith Lee chop it up where it's all like, okay, big man. Like we wanted to see that. And what we got was a slightly dressed up version of that. He doesn't, he's not dressed the same. His music's not the same, but he showed up the same. That back, God, that, that was fuck, the pop. belly to belly, the belly-to-belly suplex over his head without crouching, where he legit just grabs Orton and goes, I'll get you over. Yeah. Like, like usually the belly-to-belly and the, the back body drop involves you also going down. He did not. He stayed planted and flipped him. Like, the amount of power that Randy let him show was, was amazing. And I think we got um, a really cool future ahead of him. And I think the music and the shorts are going to be a story down the line. And I think, yeah, I think I agree with him. Just relax, relax. Well, and it's also like that Randy let him do that, and that he could, that he can do that because Randy's what six three two forty. Yeah, he's a big dude. 
Yeah, Randy Randy is a person that I think has unfortunately been kind of characterized as a middle of the road size guy for WWE. Like I truly believe Adam Cole is not on the main roster because Randy Orton is still there. Yeah. He's cuz big, dude. <laughs> yeah, like oh fuck. <laughs> yeah. Like that I met him and Seth Rollins on the same day. And mm-hmm. Seth Rollins was like, he's a little taller than me. But when I met mm-hmm. Orton, I was like, Jesus. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> don't don't be <laughs> I just remember when we saw him live and our neighbor Six who also five. came to the show. Our neighbor who also came to the show with us just looks at Orton and he's like, Okay, well fuck this guy. And I, I looked over and I was like, What? What's wrong? He's like, Look at him. He's he's like a fucking statue. And I was like, Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. Like I wasn't thinking of it that way, but sure. Yeah. No, he's, yeah, he's easy six, to hate. Yeah, he's six foot five. He's two forty. He is pretty fucking attractive, which I think they would skip over. Like he he looks good. It's like shit. Yeah, uh, yeah Kevlar's my... kid at uh, Christmas one year was sitting on Santa's lap, and Santa's like, "What do you want for Christmas, little boy?" And he's all like, "I want Randy Orton." And the woman standing behind him in line goes, "You and me both, kid." And yeah. Kevlar turned around and was like. Oh. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but he just didn't have a Randy Orton figure yet, so I got them got him that next best thing. But he already looks like an action figure. But it, it, he's easy to hate because of stuff like that. And and I agree. If he's six five, and then you have a six foot Adam Cole show up, what like what does that look like? It's a two foot difference. Yeah. You know what I mean? There's a four inch difference here, and you go, yeah, I don't know. I don't know I about hear, Adam Cole. I hear everything yeah. you're clicking oh, no. and typing. Yeah. Um, was there anything else this week that took place that you wanted to make sure we talked about? Because I wanted to hit those those big things. Um, we saw. I mean, we saw what the hell is its name come back briefly. Who? Um, I don't know. Uh, what you're the group of the group of fuckers. Yeah, Retribution. Like I said, uh, I, I mentioned that earlier. They came back. They did their thing at the end of the, of the show. I yeah. think that means we're going to get uh, Dominic and Ray in another tag match, which I'm okay with. I don't know where they're going with it. I think we're at a point now where they need to put out a mission statement, but I don't know what else yeah, to say they about need to, They need to do something because, like, and, the, and I think they're also kind of, like, weirdly attaching them to the Monday night to, like, Seth Rollins, and I don't think – I they shouldn't be attached to them. I don't think – that Seth needs it, and I think it hurts them. Well, they've also been attached to Miz, and they've been attached to um, who was the other one? I don't know. Maybe it was Jinder, but I, I don't know. Uh, at this point, we've gotten no answers at all, and I'm okay with building up a lot of questions and a whole lot of what are they here, why are they here, but I don't know how many months you think you can get away with that before I stop caring while you're here if you're not going to tell me why you're here. I just want you out. Yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? Like, and I don't know that there's, I don't know what kind of heat you want from that, right? Because I understand there's also like no such thing as go away heat. All heat is good heat if you're mad and yelling at the screen. But we're already there. We're we're already kind of like boo retribution. Fuck these guys. Like, it's cool and exciting. We're like, oh my God, they're doing this. But we're not cheering for them. Mm -hmm. But without knowing why they're there or what they want, uh, it's just another segment that I don't think is worth talking about at this point. Does yeah. that make sense? I agree with that. Yeah, it's like it. If we don't see much more, it becomes honestly, it's, it's like two segments away from it becoming the um, like a Benny Hill gag, like do 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 do, like like yeah. just okay, like we're running and chasing people, and I mean I've not been a big it's been kind of giggly to me from the start. So it's not getting better because when they run out with bats and do that, I'm like, it, it makes me giggle. Cause okay. If you're running out with bats and shit and you're not going to fuck things up, then why are you running out with bats? Like, if you're not going to say what you want, like, mm-hmm. what do you want? What's going to make you stop? Like, you're not telling me actually do something. Like, and well, it comes to like, if we're going to do this, this way, we're going to bring out weapons and do something fucking do something. Like but they do, the Clump. You're just wrong on that. They used a chainsaw on the ring. They smashed a window with a brick. They've spray painted all over the stuff. They smashed a table. They've used the bats on on like chasing people around. So they're doing stuff, but they're just for no reason. You know what I mean? I mean, like, 
again, it still like it feels like the chainsaw part to me feels like oh, okay, like you're destroying the ring. I wish they would hit someone with a bat. Yeah. They darted Rey Mysterio like NWO style. I was waiting for that to happen. That finally happened. But I don't know why. So that's all I'm saying is like I don't see the point of talking about them until they tell me why they're here. Because at this point, they're not a part of the story. They're just a question yeah. mark at the end of the day. I don't know yeah. what they're doing. I don't know why they're here. Yeah, they're destroying stuff. Yeah, they're wrecking everything they can. Yeah, they're terrorizing people. Why? I don't know. Well, who's going to stop them? I don't know. I don't know what they want. So I don't know how you're supposed to stop them. Or are they going to stop them? I don't know. Maybe they just go away. They don't know. I don't know why they're here. You know what I mean? Without knowing why you're here, I have no way to get behind anyone else. Or, like, I can't cheer or boo you even. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, it's just, it's too many weeks of us not knowing why you're here. All I need is a mission statement. Have one person grab a camera and say, you want us to stop? This is what it's going to take. This is what we're fed up on. And then, yeah. boom, okay. And then they say something that's crazy. They can say something absolutely crazy. You want us to stop? Then I want USA to take us down. I don't want another show. You go, okay, well, that's never going to happen. So now you have a story at least. Okay, they, they have a thing against USA. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know. But you have to give me something. Yeah, and I think also, like, the reasons that them doing that, like, that it bugs me like when you say like it's pointless and needless is it is more so added to that when you add these tools to it because when you come out in big moments and then we don't hear what you're doing the longer this happens the more it's needless and pointless and then i feel like i'm being it as a an audience member like i don't care like why you're not injuring anyone either actually yeah. hit Corey. take Corey out for yes. a month Hit Corey if, with a bat and have him grab his arm and scream and leave. And you go, holy shit, did they just break Corey's arm? Yes. You know what I mean? Because then there's like an injury. You know what I mean? But like they just jumped Dominic, a fucking child and his midget dad. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, <laughs> Right. Well, I'm saying like they beat up Rey Mysterio and his kid. But they don't even hurt them. <laughs> they punch him a little bit, throw him out of the ring, and they go, now we're standing here. Okay, why? We're going to get so canceled because of you. Ray's a whole inch as tall as Adam Cole. He is. But, like, you know what I mean? Like, if you're going to jump someone, do something. They put a, a referee through the table who was back on Wednesday night refing a match. Yeah. <laughs> you put the same guy there. He was back on TakeOver. If they're going to jump someone and throw them through a table, they need to be off TV for a while. But I see Drake show up three days later on on. NXT and I go oh okay they didn't really they put them down softly I guess so they're all they blew... bark and no bite maybe they're all bark and I don't know what they're barking about they blew up something and then it they set something on fire any... yeah they you took a chainsaw to the ropes on the ring not even the ring mm -hmm. you know they threw a uh, cinder block through a window they've spray painted walls they screamed mm -hmm. at Kayla they put a referee gently through a table apparently <laughs> They gave a couple punches to Dominic and rolled him out of the ring. Mm -hmm. What? It's why to hurt someone. Have people come out in rage. crutches. Impotent yeah. rage. They're like the hot topic punk rockers. Yeah. Like they're do something, do something, or say something. If you tell me you're not going to stop this until something happens, this happens or that happens. Okay, I know why we're here. But realistically, so the you need, they need an injury now. angle. They need, they need a line of people to come out there with crutches and say, these guys are hurting our our people. We have to stop them. You know what I mean? Well, and that we have nobody actually talking about it. Like, that's another thing is, like, if, like, if something like this happens, you need, like, a Vince or shit. Let's be a Pritchard. Somebody say, I don't know what's happening. Like, and, like, this is bullshit. Do something. Add security yeah. that we're not even talking about. It's like, what are you doing? If we're not addressing this, and this is that, well, they mention it. the The commentators mention it, but it doesn't really go beyond that. Is the problem. like it's almost again like, oh, this is happening. Oh, is this like a variety act? Yeah, and that's my point. That's why I don't want to talk about it. There's nothing to talk about. They're not doing anything yeah. until they do something. I don't want to bring it up again. Fair. You know what I mean? Cool, like, then. there's just no point. We are on this show to talk about things that we thought were exceptionally good. Or just so bad they need to be off TV. Retribution is just in a holding pattern. It's just static. It's static on the TV just like the Angel Guards of shit. There's no point in talking about it unless you guys are going to do something with it. Oh, yep. I know what needs to get off TV. 
this thing uh, on that topic. Shayna Baszler, I think she could have a different partner altogether. Oh, we talked about that earlier. We mm. definitely already talked about Nia and Shayna. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, until Retribution says why they're here or does something serious, because at this point they're just, they're not even yelling at the cameras anymore. They're just yelling at random, like they're not doing anything or saying anything. So I think that that storyline needs to move in any direction and it'll be good. Uh, cause I'm actually, I like the idea of what's going on with it, but it's been the same thing now for weeks. Yeah. They turned over a car or some shit like, okay, why without a Why? It's hard for me to give a shit or talk about. There's nothing to speculate on. We can't sit there and say, oh, what if they do this with this? What if they go there? I don't fucking know. They're not telling me anything. Yeah, I was yeah. really hoping that there was going to be some sort of hint as to who these people are. Because I think there are some cool stories that could happen, but they're just not touching any of it. Like one person I thought, oh, what if that's Ember Moon? What if that's Jinder Mahal? What if it's all these people who've been out for injuries and forgotten and now angry. That would be a cool story. That'd be something. We don't have any of that. We so I don't want to speculate about that. I don't want to talk about anyone's names until they give me something. I don't want to talk about why they're here until they give me something. There's a bunch of random speculation with literally no meat on it. And I'm, mm -hmm. I think it's a waste of time. I feel like I've spent 15 minutes explaining why it's not worth talking about. Yeah. 100%. No, no, no. I, <laughs> I, I think, but it, I think it like, and again, I, I know we're just adding to this. I think it speaks to, like, I would love this to mean something so that we could actually have a reason to talk about it. Yeah, like it's, I want to talk just... about it when it means something. I don't want to talk about it before then. Okay. Because we talked about it a bunch when it first came out. And we're like, this is cool. This is okay. a big thing. Something's happening. And then now nothing's happened for weeks, and it's not worth talking about until something happens again. At this point, Sorry, there's, nothing, buddy. there's nothing there. Sorry, little buddy. I just... There's nothing there. We have nothing to talk about. They're not giving us anything, and that's the problem. I feel like so. when we talk about something pointless like this, it brings up – it's it's like if we called Adam Cole short. It's your short. His, his needless storylines. <laughs> I think it worked for Pat McAfee's story, though, because if Adam Cole <laughs> beats Pat McAfee like he did, now no one can say it again, right? No, 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 but I mean, like, insult. it's it's getting you riled up. <laughs> like, that's what I mean, that we're still talking about it. That's what I mean, is it's like, like, I, I could see you, like, kicking a mic and coming at some, coming at me. Like, really? We're going to keep talking about this? That's what I well, mean. Well, yeah. Yeah. Was there anything else that happened on any of the shows you guys wanted to hit on? Ah, I think, like, I think it was a good, solid overall, like, there's a lot of highlights to it. There isn't as many. There's really many negatives. I mean, I think the biggest negative to me is the fans. Oh, we're gonna see if. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> fuck. I, God damn it! I didn't want to go back into that one. Yeah, the fans. Fuck. Fuck us. We're. we're some of us are shitty. But oh. really cool that Jeff Hardy now has a title. I'm pretty excited about that. I'm. Yeah. Really strange that he wasn't on. I thought they were gonna do a title match on SummerSlam and they didn't. So I thought that was really weird that Jeff Hardy didn't yeah. defend the title there. So I hope we see him on SmackDown defending it at least. But for everyone that was really pissed off at what they were doing, the story that they were telling, I hope, I hope that this makes them look back and be like, oh, maybe, maybe there was something to that. And I hope they watch his Chronicle and realize that this is supposed to be his sobriety retirement run for a reason. Yeah. This, this Did really you happen nice. to catch any of the Talking Smack segment with Miz and Big E? I saw a little bit of it. Yeah, I thought it was kind. I thought it was pretty cool. I thought it was like pretty neat. I, I appreciated, dude. Honestly, you need to watch like watch the or listen to the New Day podcast because it made me really appreciate Miz. And that also like what I saw there was like, I liked what was said there, and I liked both. Like I liked everyone's role there. Because I thought it was did, important. Miz did it to go Biggie into giving that promo, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's but that's I something they can a lot do, of people yeah. were talking shit, like saying that like Miz like really felt this way, and I was like, I got the impression uh -huh. that Miz was trying to make Biggie say the things he knows Biggie has inside of him. Yes, like he was trying to force that out of him because Biggie was like, "I'm just gonna joke and do this and that," and I think Miz was all like, "You can joke and do this and that." 
but I think I can dig out just enough of what gets under your skin to okay. bring out that next level of you. And that's all he really needs. And I think that's what, what Miz was even trying to say is that like, it's not that you need to stop being jokey. It's that you need to add just a little bit of serious when need be. And I think that Big E's belief was that, oh, I do that in the ring and then just not on the outside. And I felt like Miz was prodding him to say, you can do a little bit on the outside. Not a lot, but just enough, and it'll mean a lot. And the other thing I think, too, is it, it like it's a good way of E showing that he can do that. Because one thing I think, too, that I don't like that happens to E is E is a E in the podcast, E on... E shows it a lot because E is very multidimensional, mm-hmm. and I think we—I mean, like, if E was an uh, as an unsilly care like uh, care, like happy go lucky silly fucking guy, he wouldn't come out every week with an armband of somebody who mm-hmm. died, who shouldn't have been, who shouldn't have died, or whose importance should be recognized. Someone's, you know, one of these people, because he's yeah. been doing that and he's not stopped, and he keeps doing it, and he. You know, he basically he'll tweet it, but it's more like, you know, it's it's there to like bring attention to it. And that's amazing to me. And yeah, that's then like there's a serious up. side to him, and he thinks what brought him to the dance is just the jokiness because he was even talking about the serious stuff didn't work for him. But I think that I think that there's a nice balance somewhere in there, and I think that's what Miz was trying to get out of him, and I think he kind of did in that yeah. interview. Um, I think the so other I just thought it was a great. I think the other thing too is like Miz. Uh, so in the Nudie podcast, and this comes up is Miz says, "I take pride in pissing people off mm-hmm. because a couple of things. One, if I can do that, that means I'm doing my job. I'm a bad guy. The other thing is, if I'm doing that and somebody can hate me, that means that somebody else isn't getting shit, and it can bring yeah. someone up. And I'm like, yeah, like quit. Like it was like quit making me like you, you fuck. <laughs> yeah." Yeah, like you fucking. Just what I've been saying the whole time. Yeah, it's not what you've been saying the whole time. You said he makes you laugh. That's what you said. Yeah, but I also think he's he does things for a reason. We might not always agree with that reason. We might think his bits are really dumb, but in this case, I just think it was really cool. Yeah, it's good. Well, and for that reason, we're going to keep hating him. Yep, because that's continue to hate him. Yeah, because he's fucking asshole. (laughs) <laughs> yeah 100 percent. the worst all right man i think that's the last yeah. call right on i think it was pretty cool i'm really excited about the thunderdome i hope you get the chance to register and jump into one uh because they're really cool they do go off east coast time though so you're talking like around five o'clock is when you'd have to be ready is there any day you, do you think that there's any like monday or friday that you'd be able to be ready by then nope no God. Well, uh, what about pay-per-view what about a pay-per-view day like a sunday Sundays I know is shit is shit because I'm twelve to nine. Ugh, God! I yeah. want to get you in the no, Thunderdome. It, it, dude, it's it's my it's it's st- stuff for me. And Mondays, it's because I'm babysitting, and that's you know those are things that I need to do. Like, Ugh, it's babysitting. It's for me, dude. Like, Ugh, family, you're the worst. You guys and your families, you did it all wrong. All right. Um, well, we'll figure out a day. We'll find a way to get you in the Thunderdome and have you call out sick and pretend that that's not what you did. We'll do it. We'll I'll get just, one. Yeah, put up. I'll dye my hair again. Yeah, it'll be great. <laughs> well, I think that's last call. I think it was a really good week in wrestling. I think it was a really cool week for pay per views. I'm really excited yeah. to see AEW and NXT both have about the same ratings because I think that means that we can all shut the fuck up about the ratings, right? Because they don't actually mean anything when you're on different days and get the same ratings. So. There is no war. It's all wrestling in peace. Oh, that's WAP right there, dude. Wrestling in peace. No, W. that's W-E-P. I. Oh, wrestling and peace? I'm trying to think of like what the I in that wet in wet something pussy is. That's frustrating. What are you talking about I? Wrestling and peace. You said in. No, I didn't. Dude, oh. that's, that's WAP right there. Wrestling and peace. All right, let's wrap it up. Yeah, wrap it up. <laughs> Get it? Stop. Yeah. All right. Stop no. it. All right. Stop the show. That's last call. Cheers. Boom. Wireless access. <laughs>